Let's do this. Let's go live. Live chat. Let's go live. We're back, boys. Oh my god. All right, let's make sure that this is working. Let us make sure this is all working. Thank you, my lord. YouTube? YouTube? Dougie's Corner? YouTube? Dougie's Corner? Bloody Vegas Live? And? How's it look? Bloody Vegas Live? Oh my god, bro. That's sick as, mate. You know, just a little bit of live is sick as, mate. Oh. Live chat. Pop out chat. Boom. Are you okay? My mistake. Oof. Oof. Halibar versus Ogden. Let's do it. All right, we're here. We're here now. We're here now. Boom, 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 boom. How are my picks going? All right, let's do that. Let's hang out. Let's hang out, okay? We got two right, two wrong. How are my picks been going? Probably not good. <laughs> Probably not good. Oh, my picks are going horribly. I've gotten two right so far. That's it. I thought Nguyen was going to win. I thought Gibson was going to win. I thought Ramos was going to win. I've got Trey Ogden for this one, but Jesus, who knows, huh? That's the game. Who knows, huh? But hey, it's been a hell of a week. I'll tell you that. It's been a hell of a week. We've been camping this week. Plus, it was busy as this week, so there was no live streaming for me this week. But it's all good. We've managed to come together. We're going to hang out. We're going to be watching this just filthy, disgusting, atrocious UFC live card today. Just atrocious. How they could have Rose Nami Eunice as a favorite. You know, God knows. God knows. You know. Let's move me. Order. Move to the top. There we go. Let's move little Dougie up here. While we wait for them to get themselves together, what has been going on over in the MMA world this week? Misfits, mis mis misfits, misfits, misfits has literally been shut down due to a bomb scare. Did you know this? The boxing fight has been shot down due to a bomb scare. And the SWAT are in the arena. They've completely shut down misfits. And the SWAT are just hanging out, ringing the bell. It's ridiculous. Look at this. All the people are out the front of Misfits. 
whole arena has been emptied out. Jeez, look at this. Oh, my God. What a stuff up for them. To swat an innocent event. <laughs> what the hell? Just wildness. Wildness for the Misfits boxing team. And then, of course, on um, earlier on the prelims, we've had Igor being cut from the UFC for biting. And Dana White has announced that he is going to be cut from the UFC for actually biting someone else in the arena in the middle of a fight. I mean, the kid's young. He should learn. He should know better. But still... What are you doing, mate? You cannot be biting people. All right, we are off with Kurt Kolobar. Let's see. Tapology, rankings... That is true. Ain't no one getting the boys over to watch Rose Ribas. All right. Mate, ain't even nobody getting the boys online to watch Rose Ribas by the looks of it. All right. Trey Ogden, please. I need to get at least three or four fights right this card because it has been an absolute minefield. We're off. They've touched gloves. Ogden, please, mate. Please stop backing up straight away, mate. Please. All right. Come on, let's go, Ogden. Oof, tap, tap from Ogden, finally. Finally. Three, two, one. Mm. We're off. We're off. Oof. Ogden on top. Ogden on top. Everything's just lined up beautifully. Come on. Nice elbows from the bottom from Holobar. Real nice elbows. Holobo, holoba, holobo. Just top pressure. Just top pressure, which is boring as shit. And horrible to watch. But great for my picks. Not really doing much damage though, is he? You know? Ugh. Mate. 
This sort of sums up this card perfectly, doesn't it? Imagine if we have this for 15 minutes. Dear God, why? Why why do this to us MMA fans? I think I might actually get one fight right this time. <laughs> and in the worst way possible. Like, this is one of those fights where I'm going to be like, all right, I got Ogden right. That's good. But I'm going to be so angry at him for putting on such a shit, boring, sleep-inducing performance. But thank God I at least got one fight right, finally. Apparently, the Misfits boxing card is going to be resetting in half an hour. The Misfits boxing card got a bloody bomb threat and they had to empty out the arena while the swap went through it in the middle of the Misfits card. Khabib is the legend for life, bro. You're not wrong, mate. You're absolutely not wrong. This is a very Khabib performance, isn't it? A lot of laying and praying. Early Khabib, before he really started doing a lot of damage. Uh, UFC is on in 15 minutes. The main card is on in 15 minutes. Yes, that is true. But the uh, prelims are on now, mate, which is what we're watching. Ogden has been laying on top of Holaba for three minutes. You miss Khabib? Me too, man. Me too. It was always such a fun build-up to be like, is this the one? Is this the one that's going to beat Khabib? Me too, man. But, I mean, we got Khabib 2.0, don't we? We got Islam Makashev. Khabib plus striking. Mm. Nice elbows now from Ogden. Holiba's gas tank is starting to gas out a little bit. Yeah, right. Who is my favorite fighter? I'm still loving Volkanovski. I'm still loving Volkanovski. As a Aussie, I'm a big believer in Volkanovski. But uh, JDM, Oliveira, Poya. Islam is the next Khabib, you supposed? I, I feel like uh, Islam Makashev is like an evolved level of Khabib. Like he understands the striking more. Bulk is the man, brother. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, I feel like Islam Makashev is the um, evolved, like 2.0. Like he understands everything that Khabib understood about grappling, but on top of that is his level of striking. You know, he was able to stand there and strike with Volkanovski and eventually knock Volkanovski out in the second fight, as we know, which is just brilliant. You know, like Khabib struggled in the striking against number 11 ranked ally Quinta. So you've got everything that Khabib knew about wrestling plus striking. And that's Islam Makashev, like the true pound for pound number one fighter in the world at the moment. Probably the best fighter in the world at the moment could be Islam Makashev or Tom Aspinall. But right there on that, on that line, mate. Who is, uh, who is your favorite fighter? Are you an Islam fan? Who's your current favorite MMA fighter? The round two has started. I count my. I start my countdown timer about thirty seconds in to give time for all the commercials and shit to go out of the way. <laughs> that fucking username, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Gage is your favorite. Oh no, I've missed my countdown. Oh shit! Let's go twenty seconds. 20, boom. Okay, you say Islam for now? Nice. Nice. He's well-rounded now, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Gaethje, favorite fighter. How can, like, Gaethje's everyone's favorite fighter, isn't he? Okay. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. 
I'm just going to be calling you AZ. I'm not fucking reading that out. <laughs> he's well round. Yeah, he's incredibly well rounded. Incredibly well rounded. Probably because they took all that training that they did over in Dagestan with the wrestling and, you know, brought it over to AKA on that, like, Habib's first wave. So they learnt everything from AKA as well as all the wrestling. The American Kickboxing Academy. Jiu Jitsu. Venom looks pretty good. Michael Venom Page. You reckon he looks pretty good? I want to see him against an opponent that's going to fight fight back. I really want to see um, Venom Page against Ian Gary, to be honest, because obviously Ian Gary doesn't want to lose, and Ian Gary is going to play that creative striking with him. He does. He does, because he's coming at such wild-ass angles. Yeah, he makes people, Michael Venom Page makes people hesitate. It's the wild, odd angles that he comes from. Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> but I think with MVP versus Kevin Holland and with MVP's entire career, no one's taken the fight to MVP. He's been a bit of a can crusher. And if you have someone like Ian Gary, who's got nice, flowy, creative striking, who actually doesn't want to fucking lose a fight, and you put that in there with MVP, that would actually be an interesting challenge. Ian Gary will be the next champion. It really depends on how they match him up, though, doesn't it? You know, because how is Ian Gary's grappling going to go at the highest of levels? You know, we, we still haven't seen him put against, like, I don't know, a Bilal or a Shavkat. Or maybe even a Sean Brady. Like, Ian Gary is a phenomenal striker, but let's face it, he beat Jeff Neal, you know? And Neil Magny. Like, who are these names, really? And, and, furthermore, if Jeff Neal had actually pressed Ian Gary and tried to fight him, Jeff Neal could have won that fight. He's very tall. You're absolutely right. Ian Gary is very, very tall for that division. Yeah. Oh, Ogden is just babying Hullabar at the moment, boys. Ian's not interested in MVP. Yeah, I know he isn't, but I mean, he's not ready for a championship fight yet, is he? Like, he needs to fight someone. But now, Bilal's lack of personality is his weakness. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, you, you, Mason, what's up, brother? I'm back from camping, literally pulled in this morning. How you going, Macy? The camping was sick, man. We had a great time. We were up at a rainforest on the side of a waterfall. It was sick. Um, Bilal, Bilal needs to learn that this is an entertainment business and the people that have been getting championship shots are entertaining fighters in one way or another. Like they're either an entertaining fighter or an entertaining personality. And Bilal is not an entertaining fighter or an entertaining personality. So why the fuck would they like give him that fight? You know? KS is a shell of his former self. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan Henderson. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an old school dog. He's an old school dog. I wouldn't know if he was one of the best fighters. Because uh, Dan Henderson is fucking messy, isn't he? Enjoying this hot, humid weather here in Florida. Good, man. Enjoy it before, like, I mean, it's getting cold here, so it's getting into your summer. So enjoy your summer, man. Do you like the green sheets? Do I like the green shorts? I don't mind the green venom shorts, if that's what you're saying, crispy. You went to go up to this park up by Darwin, amazing waterfalls and hiking. Yeah, that's what we did, man. It was like, I think, two and a half hour drive out of Melbourne. We left on Friday morning, just like kicked it over the weekend. It was, it was nice. It was real nice. And then this morning we packed up at about 7 a.m., drove back in, unpacked everything, got some Aussie Maccas. I actually call it Maccas here. Got some Maccas and now we're hanging out. 
Yeah, that's good. Exactly, it's not fair, it's business. Uh, AZ, yeah, man, like if you want a title shot based on merit, go join the PFL. Like this is the UFC. This is different, you know? I'm a prism pride. You, you're talking about the old pride fights where it was just fucking chaos. We could have soccer kicks and shit. <laughs> Darwin is even hotter than Florida. Darwin is dry as shit. Crispy, you're going to take a messy green shit in my beard. Mate, I cannot let you get close enough for that to happen, okay? You're going to be on the floor just riling in agony before you even get close enough. And then I'm going to shit into your mouth, mate. So take that, Crispy. Australia, big... Empty, my goodness, the amount of empty land. Yeah, we drove like in a straight direction for like two and a half hours until we got into the rainforest. You could say that you climbed as rock before they stopped letting people. So did my brother. My brother was one of the last groups of people to get up there and do it, man. Yeah, mate, pride rules. Soccer kicks. Let's go. <laughs> Crispy. <laughs> You're from Canada, and most of the land is else is empty. A lot like the USA and Midwest. Nice, man. I can't believe you're getting away with that name in, with a Canadian IP address. They're going to lock you up for that shit. UFC is bed for humans. Humans. UFC is bed for... UFC is bad for humans? Is that what you're trying to say? UFC is brilliant for humans. It's the last vestige we have left of our animal instincts that need to be released. UFC is a must-have in humanity. Do I train MMA, Mason? Is that what you're saying? I do not, brother. Oh my god, I missed the clock. Why did nobody tell me? Because it's a fucking dead shit fight where they're rolling around on the ground and nobody cares, Doug. That's why. Because nobody fucking cares. 50, 49, 48, 46... 45, boom. Mason, do I train MMA? No, nah, mate. I do not. I just watch it. <clears throat> UFC will drag you to retirement without pay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I need you to elaborate on that. I don't understand what you mean. Pride was vicious and I loved it. I feel like the more vicious a combat sport can be the truer it is to our human nature and the more fun it is to watch. Melianenko is the best fighter ever. I mean, he's fun, but he's not the best fighter ever. Mikhail Krokop, he's from, he's obviously from Croatia and my heritage, my background is Serbian, which all used to be part of Yugoslavia, which was one country before it was torn apart by NATO. So Krokop is a fellow brother of mine. I got a special place in my heart for Krokop. Who do you got, Hill or Pereira? I think Jamal Hill is going to do it, believe it or not. I'm, I'm actually going to be backing Jamal Hill. Krokop, right leg hospital, left leg surgery. So true, man. Those fucking head kicks. Jesus Christ, man. Who was better than Emilian Anko? Oh, um, I mean, anyone in the modern roster? <laughs> Like, there was a time, yeah, where it was just boxing with a bit of wrestling and savagery. You know what I mean? That was that time, that era, savagery. But when it actually comes to, like, the skill of fights, the modern era has a higher skill level. You know what I mean? Your favorite um, fighter back in Pride was Shogun Rua? Yes, that is, that is fair. That is damn fair. You got Hill 2? So, if you have Serbian heritage, what does your name mean? I'm a presume. I think the last presume is like a question, yeah? Like presume, like what do you mean? I'm not sure what I'm a ime presume. I'm not sure. I mean, I have Serbian heritage, but like I was born in Australia and raised in Australia. And my mother is Serbian. Ime presume. Not sure, to be honest. Not sure. Ime presme. I don't know. What do, what does it mean, mate? 
type it in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Against his peers. Yeah, fair. The sport's always evolving. True, man. True. Hill is, he's going to knock them out. Hill is going to knock them out. Serbs love water polo, bro. Serbs love it. It's, um, it's wild how much they're all into it. Is that the end of the prelims? Are we finally done with the prelims now? We can move on to the main card. I feel like we can, yeah. Boom. Yeah, I, so I have not been to Serbia since I was... Like, we used to go back there and visit it with my family. <clears throat> but I haven't been there since maybe like 14, something like that. It's been, a, it's been a while. And my mother would like... Con it's so strange. Like, my mother will speak to me in Serbian and I'll understand her, but I speak back to her in English. Very wild. Very well. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's all done there. That's all done there. That's good. That's the end of the bloody prelims, huh? Oh, you're Croatian? Nice, mate. Nice. We're all part of the same area, you know? The same Russian Federation. Serbia was nice, Mason. You went there? You went to Belgrade? Cool, man. I'm so surprised to see so many people have gone to Serbia and like Croatia in that region and checked it all out. That's damn cool, man. You want to go to Australia, but every animal wants to kill you or the koalas will give you chlamydia. The, ko the koalas do have horrible, horrible chlamydia. That is true. But this idea of every Australian animal wants to kill you, as an Aussie who is aware of America, that idea is fucking bullshit, right? You guys have got mountain lions running around outside of your cities. You've got rattlesnakes. You've got alligators. You've got fucking bears. Bears giant animals that can climb trees and enter your house north america is way more fucked than all of australia <laughs> like i don't get this meme of like australia every animal wants to kill you fucking crazy mate hill is gonna sleep alex maybe man i think i think he will dude i think he will especially with what we've been seeing from alex Pereira lately just like partying hanging out with the girls, having a good time. I don't know, dude. It's a bit iffy. Jim Jeffries told you that. Jim Jeffries' first comedy show is fucking goated. It's so good. Hill is a dangerous guy. He has an ability to find chins. Absolutely he does, man. Who wins, Sugar Sean or Marub? I'm going with Sean O'Malley now. Wreckage or Yuri? I'm going to go with Wreckage. Brothers in blood. Serbia has nice sunsets. Mate, Ime, we get it. We understand it. Some bloke in Queensland got bit by a snake in his classroom and died. I mean, you know, it was a fucking bad day, mate. Shit happens. Walk it off. Be not dead. <laughs> True. You hunted a grizzly in Alaska and they are apex. AZ, that is the sort of shit that I'm talking about, right? That's fucking insanity, mate. That is insanity. Those things are, like you said, apex killers trying to hunt you down and can eat you. Like, fucking crazy. You have alligators everywhere. This is what I'm saying! And then you guys are going to be like, oh, fucking Australia, mate. Everything there wants to kill you. Fuck off. Mooses are assholes. <laughs> what a sentence. <laughs> Mooses are assholes. Just end of fact. <laughs> Um, you can't out rhyme or out... Yeah, I know, you can't do anything. Like, if, you can even shoot a grizzly with a shotgun and that thing will just keep fucking charging at you, you know? At least with a kangaroo, you can stand up to it man to man and have a bit of a fucking, like, who's going to win this? But with a grizzly, no chance. Nama Yunus or Ribaz tonight? Who are you going for? I do, I, like, pick with my brain, but I'm going for Ribas. Did I pick Ribas officially on my tapology? I did. I'm going with Ribas um, because fuck Nami Yunus and fuck, yeah, fuck her. She put together the most boring fight in UFC history. I'm never forgiving her for that, ever. Who, who are you going for? <laughs> who are you going for, man? Which one are you going for, mate?
Kangaroos are dangerous. They fight dirty, kick you in the groin, and poke you in the eye. It is, it is true, mate. It is true. You got to be very quick with a kangaroo because if those claws bounce up and get into your stomach, they can actually rip your uh, rip your stomach open. Rose is so hit or miss. Yes, she is. I think Rose. I think Rose is mentally done. Maybe not even just in the fight game. Like I think she's cooked. She's done. Same, same, same. Ribas, Ribas. Yeah, I feel like you know because it's. It's a WMMA main event. It's a bit like, this doesn't really affect anything. Who cares? But it's more for us, the fans, to get our revenge on Rose for boring us to death. For boring us to death. Pat Barry in the corner isn't a help. Absolutely. Pat Barry in anyone's corner is not a fucking help. Pat Barry should be in the corner of a prison cell, to be honest. <clears throat> A Tarantino wrote a scene in Dust Till Dawn where Selena Hayek pours tequila down her leg and forces the guy to drink it by sucking her own toes and then cast himself in that role. Yeah. Tarantino's a bit of a fucking lunatic, mate. <laughs> Look at this one, guys. Right. Dana White has reportedly rewarded... Andre Lima with the first ever I got fucking bit bonus. If he got a bonus for that, if this isn't just a joke from MMA Orbit. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. So I was in the car, Mace, Mason, I was in the car on the way home and I didn't have the audio on, right? I wasn't listening because like Jamie's in the car with me. She's next to me and she's just like trying to chill out and scroll or whatever. So I just had the phone up in the dashboard. I didn't have the um, audio on so I could still pay attention to everything that was going on around me. And the fight stopped. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They weren't in like an eye poke position or a knee position. Like, what the fuck was this? And then it started to unfold quietly. I couldn't fucking believe that he had actually bitten someone in the cage. Oh, man. Pat Barry in his prime was a good fighter. He had insane kicks. Yes, that is true. Pat Barry fucked up Big Daddy Gary Goodrich. <laughs> Seriously, though, the best fighter of all time could be Demetrius Johnson. I was talking in chat about this last week. I put DJ up there as my greatest fighter of all time. And even when I did a video this week about John Jones, I started... Oh, no, I did a video this week. And I started off by saying the greatest MMA fighter of all time, Demetrius Johnson said that Anthony Joshua could beat Francis Ngannou in a boxing match. And I got so much hate on that video because people were like, John Jones is the GOAT. John Jones is the GOAT. I was like, maybe, maybe. Crow Cop beat Pat Barrett. Did he? Did he really? I didn't know that. Also, uh, Mason Herring. <clears throat> Mason Herring. If you go to the description of this live chat, I have a Discord now. And when I go live, because I go live so randomly during the week, I will put it in the Discord so you guys can get notifications. Or when it's looking like I'm having an early day off work and I'm going to have time to go live, I will put it in the Discord to be like, tonight, boys, live chat. Fucking get around Dougie's Corner. So if you're interested in catching me for more live chats, there is a link to the Discord server. I will post in there when we do it. The problem is, though, DJ didn't fight the best competition. That is true. But John Jones, when we, like, recently, when we really start to look at his career, he was fighting people that were sort of aging out of the division. Like, he was fighting the old guard, you know? And what I love so much about Demetrius Johnson is that he transitioned over to one championship where it was a completely different rule set. Like the knees on the ground, which is how he lost his first um, title. And he went and tried to fight Muay Thai fight with Rod Tang. Like, to, uh, to me, Demetrius Johnson is someone who is constantly challenging themselves. And John Jones is someone who is constantly like hiding behind their legacy. Like, John Jones doesn't want to fight Tom Aspinall. And how can you like walk around acting like you've got the world's biggest dick when you're hiding from Tom Aspinall? Whereas Demetrius Johnson is like, Ron Tang, Muay Thai only? Fuck yeah, bro. Let's do it. Like, I can respect Demetrius Johnson's grind so much more than John Jones's. And that, like, that's just a personal thing.
thing. Like this is a subjective argument, isn't it? You know what I mean? There's no like right answer to who's the goat of MMA, you know? Like someone, we started off this conversation. Who was it? We started off this conversation. Ime, Ime, you were like, Khabib's the best fighter ever. Like I'm sure to Ime, his goat is probably Khabib, you know? <clears throat> John Jones fought much better than Khabib. Did he though? Like Khabib's early competition was like sort of nameless, but like after Khabib got past Alaya Quinta, it was those three killers in a row. You know what I mean? Like he really did fight the best of lightweight. Those, those three wins that Khabib has after Alaya Quinta, they're still dominating the top of lightweight, those guys. They're still all there and knocking back the old guard. So it's a bit of MMA math, I guess, but you know what I mean? Like it sort of helps Khabib's legacy that the old guard hung around for so long. Best lighter weights are in Asia. Some of the most fun fights are in Asia. I, I have way more fun watching one championship often than I do watching UFC. Because the base of UFC seems to be American wrestling and Russian wrestling. Whereas the base of one championship seems to be stand-up Muay Thai. So they sort of have more exciting fights. Plus they're like a much wider rule set. So when things go to the ground, there's a lot more action in the rules. That again, is subjective. <clears throat> John Jones, <laughs> AZ, <laughs> John Jones beat Cormier after a week of hookers and cocaine. <laughs> you can't lie with the facts. <laughs> That's true. Anyone that fails a drug test can't be a goat. Ime, I, I was thinking that as well. And then someone said back to me in chat, but John Jones fought everyone that was on drugs as well, which is kind of true. Like in that era, everyone was doing drugs. So does that sort of cancel it out? I don't know. It's an interesting question though, right? Like if John Jones got caught for doing drugs, but everyone that he was fighting was doing drugs. Why is this fucking pair of pants on our screen, boys? Why did no one tell me? <clears throat> so you know what I mean? That's sort of... Everyone cheated back in the day and like, yeah, AZ, yeah, you're there now. Yeah, never saw blood on his face. Muhammad, what's up, brother? <laughs> How are you, man? Yes, yes, yes. Also, that meme is wrong. I've seen some sexy girls wear those pants. I don't know why that was there. It's fucking Twitter these days, isn't it, mate? But they do look ridiculous. Muhammad, you have been the one that has been pushing this cause the most, mate. So now that you're here, I'll repeat myself one more time. I made a Discord over the weekend, a Discord server, and I will be messaging in there when it looks like I'm going to have an early, I'm going to have time to go live. So download the Discord, jump in the server. I'll put notifications there of when we do go live so we can do this more often. And get around Dougie's corner. Usman versus Parkin. What a fucking boring fight that was. God, I was happy that I was on the road for that. Do you guys think that Justin Gaethje might be the first fighter to knock down Max Holloway? I do think he will. I think he will. I think Justin Gaethje is going to fucking hurt Max Holloway. I think there's a different level of power that comes at lightweight. And uh, Holloway is going to really, really be feeling it. A fucking bite, mate. Craziness. Igor Sovranano is going to be cut. I think they just said that at the um, broadcast as well. But hey, it is what it is. Holloway is already... <clears throat> Discord will really help you gather content, man. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I mean, I... I a lot of people this week in the comments were like, when are you going live? When are you going live? So I was like, yeah, okay, let's just fucking do this. Good chatting, brother. Catch you later. Saving your channel. Are you going to be here later? Yeah, I'm going to hang out for a bit this afternoon. I've been away for a while, so I'll be hanging out for a bit here, man. So yeah, jump on, man. If you want notifications, Discord link's there. Blah, 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 blah. Have a good arvo. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your fights. Holloway has already proved that he can't move up. He sort of did it short notice though, didn't he? And 
Holloway was always having trouble cutting weight in that era of his career, and he seems to have sorted that out now. So we'll see how he goes with it, but I still think the power is going to hurt him. So, AZ, I feel like, yeah, I feel like you're right, man. I literally spend too much time watching MMA videos and memes. <laughs> That's fine, mate. It's your life. You live it how you want. Boyer messed him up already. Fucking true. And I think that's that just that different level of power, you know. But, I mean, so how many fighters come up from featherweight to lightweight? Like, it's constant. Some of the best lightweight fighters have been previous featherweights. So, we'll see. I mean, it's MMA. You know, this is why we're fucking here every weekend. Because anything can happen. So, we'll see. I would have the general channel and then add a meme spam channel. We can do that. We can do that. We can build this Discord however we want. And add MMA news as well where people can share whatever news they see. We can, we can do all this, mate, as it starts to build. Saduka, no way the man is streaming. I'm finally back from the fucking forest, mate. And you can drop in tweets and articles. Yeah, I think if we can sort of streamline it, you can drop shit into the Discord. And then like I go through it here on Twitter, we can go through it live together and sort of build this up, you know? So yeah, so Saduka, I did put together a Discord server where I can notify when I'm going. Yes, sir, Dizzy up yet? Uh, who's up right now? Where are we at? Where are we at? Let me get something going here, boys. Where are we at? Main card. It's going to be Luis Pagello Palada. Boom. That's what's up next, boys. <clears throat> could Shavkat be the next champ? Yes, he could. Absolutely, he could, man. Absolutely, he could. I'm loving the Shavkat JDM fight. Loving that. I think it's going to be fucking... Oh, I can't wait to see how that goes down. JDM's scrambles lately have been so good, at least in the Gilbert Burns one. It was so good. So I'm excited for that. How do I join the Discord? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I sent an invita I copied and pasted the invitation link and put it in the description of this video. So maybe if you go onto your phone, highlight it and copy it, you can put it in Discord or you can just click on the link if it's connected to your computer. I've literally like, I don't know shit about Discord. I'm such a boomer when it comes to this stuff. I don't know. Okay, one punch kid is walking out. That's kind of, I mean, Muhammad will appreciate that. I know Muhammad's an anime fan. So, don't embarrass yourself, one punch kid. Make me a mod. Do I have to make you a mod in Discord or do you want to be a mod in YouTube? It can be a mod in YouTube. And I guess I'll click around on Discord and make you a mod in there as well once I get it going. But yeah, whatever, man. We can do it. How can I do it here? Channel activity. Block as a moderator. I don't want to block you as a moderator. I'll add as a moderator. There we go. Okay, yeah, you can be a mod in, in the Discord. No worries, man. We'll set it up. I'm not going to do it now, because right now we're live. Is McDonald's in Australia the same food and size as in North America? I don't know. When I was in America, I went to Dunkin' Donuts a lot, because uh, Jamie's Bostonian, so I was in Boston, and I fucking love the large iced coffees from Dunkin' Donuts. But I will show you guys something cool that I know you Yanks find fucking hilarious. It's actually called Maccas in Australia. I don't know if you can see that, but it literally says Maccas. And on the front of the shop, it says McDonald's. And then on the sides of the shop, it says Maccas. So the Aussies just fucking renamed it. But we have, um, we have like real, th what the hell is Maccas? That's what it's, that's McDonald's. It's Maccas. <laughs> it's even the website. Is Macca's.as. Super fries, half a dingo. 
Hey, Aussie, we are live. What's up, brother? Chat. Hey, Aussie, that's my little brother. Maccas is insane. That's weird. I oh, know, it's pretty fucking weird, isn't it? Yeah, fight time, fight time. They're, I'm, they're still announcing it for me. I don't know where you guys are at, but they're still announcing it for me. I will start the clock when we get into it. He's got the Maccas. Let's go. My stream is being dodge, boys. My stream is being dodgy. So let's see if we can tighten it up. It's been going nicely all day, but we'll see how we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, I'm coming back around. There we are, I'm back. All right. Let's go. They just announced the second fighter. Yep, they're doing it now. Well, it's good. Sorry, I thought it was McDonald's. It is It is McDonald's. It is McDonald's. On, on the front of the building, it'll say McDonald's. And then on the side of the building, it'll say Maccas. And on the all the logos, it says Maccas. It's really weird. But I'm Mexico. My stream. Live. Come on. Tai Tuibasa is so fat. <laughs> Ty needs to get back to his basic boxing. Nice a low kick. From Puello. Puello. 46, 45. Let's go. Oh, Doug, you've missed it. Doug. One second, boys. One second, one second, one second. 30, 0, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31. Let's go, boys. Let's let's enjoy UFC fight night. Fuck Rose Namajunas. <clears throat> okay, I'm catching up on chat. Andy, I mean, hey, Aussie. <laughs> I'm not watching the fights because I'm a casual. You are a casual. Miami summer is not fun, but nothing but, nothing but heat and thunderstorms. Yeah, that is similar to our um, summer, to be honest. You'll get like two or three really hot days, and then it will just pump down with thunder. Do you think pace... Do you think Peyton Talbot is the next king of 135? I don't think so. I'll have to watch more closely. Mason, John Jones is the greatest of all time. He isn't. He isn't. Demetrius Johnson is the greatest of all time. Who wins out of a kangaroo or Tai Tuivasa? I think Tai Tuivasa could jump on a kangaroo and smother it. But if the kangaroo got its claws locked in his fat gut on the first round, the first round, in the first sequence, then the kangaroo would win. Can we all agree that Raul Rosas Jr. may be the weirdest looking human being? Yes. <laughs> yes, we absolutely can. The dude is so fucking bizarre. And he's got the... Vo Did you guys see that little shoulder roll in the exchange there? That was beautiful, man. I love seeing the boxing like that. Hey, Aussie, this is the most people I've ever seen. Oh, he's down! Ooh, that was this close to getting stopped, boys. Ooh, that's nice, man. That's nice. Hey, Aussie, we're going to take on the guru. Like, mate, the guru's got nothing on Dougie's corner. Roros is junior. Oh, these fucking elbows are so good. Raul Rosas Jr., something I'd see in my nightmares, but he's talented. Imagine, like, back in the day when they had um, forced marriages. I subbed him. Beautiful. Imagine back in the day when they had, like, um, those marriages that were preordained, like, she has to marry you, and you get paired with Raul Rosas Jr. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, my God. No gas tank? I mean, it was a solid shot. It was a solid shot. Probably um, wobbled him. And he just could not scramble out of it, could he? Couldn't think. Yeah, he's just, probably just concussed. Caught underneath. Getting cracked in the skull. Yeah, savage, man. No gas tank. Mason Herring, John Jones is ducking the real fighters. Absolutely right. Absolutely right, Muhammad. Tell him. You tell Mason. John Jones is ducking Tom Aspinall. 
Cough, Tom Aspinall. Sudoku, cough, Tom Aspinall. True. I don't know why we're saying that, Sudoku. I'll catch up. Ron Rosas Jr. Is, is, is a walking human meme, unfortunately, for the kid. <laughs> that poor kid. All right, guys, we got like 20 minutes to hang out now. That was a first round knockout in the UFC Apex fight card. That means that the show has to go nice and slow because heaven forbid we get through one of these quickly. Good on you, One Punch Man. Good on you. Muhammad, you'll be happy about that. John Jones wants to fight a 41-year-old Stipe and bounce. That's elderly abuse. It is bullshit. It is. It's absolute bullshit, mate. It's absolute. You're saying John, John Jones is ducking Aspinall Sudoka? Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Padello is my... Pad, Padelia. Padelia is Mo's new favorite fighter. I'm not surprised, mate. He's got that one-punch anime thing that you love. Bro did an anime in a, a Mo. Also, who is One Punch Man? Isn't that the hat? Isn't that... I don't watch anime. Isn't that hat from One Punch Man? Or I've been getting it wrong the entire time. Is that not One Punch Man? That hat? Isn't that an anime character? Luffy from One Piece. Am I getting them mixed up? Am I being a, 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 a boomer again? <laughs> I think I'm being a boomer again. Right. So that's a, someone called Luffy from One Piece. All right. I thought it was a One Punch Man reference. I don't know, man. I don't watch anime. <laughs> okay. AZ. AZ. You don't like John Jones, but he just wins. He takes your, I, you know, this is the thing with John Jones, isn't it? Because every time John Jones fights, we lock, we watch his old fights, and we watch his opponents, and we say Jones is bad at this and bad at this and bad at this and bad at that. But you are absolutely right, because every time Jones fights, he just fucking finds a way to do it. It's so annoying. He just does. You're right, man. You're right, AZ. Doug, go Google One Punch Man. It's something different. I, w I will eventually. I mean, I don't watch that. I don't watch anime. So I watched Dragon Ball Z growing up. <laughs> that was it. You know? He takes juice, Sadooka. He takes juice and beats you with it. <laughs> uh, is that guy wearing his grandma's uh, gardening hat? It's an anime thing, mate. Get with the times, AZ. One Punch Man, he's bald and in a superhero uniform. Okay. All right, whatever. This kid's going to be bald one day if he keeps aging up. Let's hear what he's saying. He seems like he's chirpy on the mic. Let's listen to him. It was a sick performance, to be honest. Like, we were talking about those shoulder rolls before. The, like, the striking was fun to watch. And then to watch the ground and pound was really good too, wasn't it? Yeah, sick striking. Look how long his arms are as well, guys. He's got that long, lanky, he's a perfect build for MMA. We didn't like the Mexican John Jones call out. <laughs> the bro's grabbing his cup. Mate, get him back in the cage in three months. In less than three months, get him back in the cage. No injury, can make the weight easy, fun to watch, gets people riled up by saying he's the Mexican John Jones. Get him back in the cage. Saduka, would you rather someone that's fucking corny and hard to watch but tries on the microphone or just someone that goes in there and is just like, yeah, I want to thank my team. I want to thank my wife. Who do you want to fight next? Oh, anyone. I just want someone ahead of me. Like at least it's something to um, be entertained by. 
right? You know what I'm saying? Fucking Billy Quarantillo. All right. Who did I pick for the next fight? I got to log in. More. Who did I pick coming up next? Where are my picks, mate? Where are my picks? Oh, whatever. <clears throat> Who you got for the next fight? Look, I know I'm trying to like figure out where my tips are because I can't remember. Uh, I got Quarantillo. I got Quarantillo against Yusuf Fazalau next. I got Quarantillo. Yes. My picks have been going just horribly, this card, boys. Horribly. It's been no good. Okay. A bit of both, Saduka, like we were talking about, like Derek Lewis. Yeah, man. <laughs> My balls was hot. <laughs> Who you got for the next fight? Quarantillo. Looks close. It's going to be close. It's going to be nice. It's going to be a good fight, actually. The card might be starting to live up a bit. Uh, uh, Andy, Andy MMA, you got any tips for starting me on YouTube channel? Um, show up every single day, no matter what, Andy, and be yourself, mate. You can do it. Yusuf is still on a dirty win streak. He is, man, but I think Quarantillo is going to have the power. I think Quarantillo is going to have the power to deal with him. All right. Hey, did you guys know that Misfits Boxing was on today and it has been shut down because of a bombs threat? Were we aware of this? They're literally having their own pay-per-view over at Misfits. Oh, oh, Dougie said something nice about me. Good on you, Andy. And it got shut down because of a bomb threat. And it looks like it's back on now. Here we go. Check this out, lads. That's SWAT walking around the Misfits. Yes, that's SWAT walking around the Misfits pay-per-view. That's the arena. Let me uh, shut down the UFC because the audio will kill me. And let me turn on the audio for this and let's watch this. Listen. This fight after two rounds. They just stopped the well, fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we just been notified by security there has been uh, some sort of threat or some sort of incident. They are clearing out the arena, including stopping this fight after two rounds. We have to leave as well. We're gonna take a short break, make sure everything is good and that everyone is safe. And then we will resume uh, to zone resume X series Bro, Misfits 13 no, swatted. I, we all heard that. Absolutely crazy. Mom, Muhammad goes, who cares about Misfits for losers, mate? I'd rather watch women's ever, mate. Mate, what if Dana White saw the numbers on tonight's pay-per-view and was like, more people are watching Misfits than a Rose Number Yunus ESPN Apex card? And he fucking gets on the blower, not the blow, but the blower, the phone, gets on the phone and calls in the bomb threat. <laughs> what if he did that <laughs> to tank misfits? <laughs> oh, shit. Has anyone watched Roadhouse yet? I have not, Saduka. I have not, but I want to. <laughs> hey Aussie, I've already watched half the movie already just on YouTube clips. <laughs> you give it a seven out of ten. I mean, I'm like, I'm gonna watch it. You know, it's Conor McGregor, 
And Jack Gyllenhaal. Jack Gyllenhaal is a sick actor. I'm going to watch it for sure, man. I'm going to watch it. So hell yeah, I'll, I'll watch it eventually. I just got to find the right um, the right link. You know what I mean? Because I am not buying a subscription service. <laughs> but I'll find it and I will watch it. Seven out of ten. How is Connor's acting? Do they just let Connor McGregor be Connor McGregor? Just let him run wild? AZ, Chael Sonnen was the best combo of talker and fighter. Remember when he said the Noguera brothers thought a bus in New York was an animal and they tried to feed it a carrot tooth? <laughs> Chael Sonnen hit the nail on the head perfectly of what the UFC could be and could become. That press conference where he's with Tito Ortiz, Tito Ortiz and he's like, Tito's wife has made money using her mouth as well, the ex-prostitute. Or something like that. <laughs> it was just like, what? <laughs> that was so good. Chael was goaded at that. And still is, man. That whole argument that he got into with Ariel Hawani, which was about just fucking nothing, like they were arguing about completely different things. Only Chael Sonnen could argue for half an hour and not bring up any relevant points. Goat. Yeah, McGregor didn't even have to act in Roadhouse. It was awesome. I thought so. I thought it was like, McGregor, just go do cocaine and we'll film you. And he was huge. Do you guys remember how he looked right as Roadhouse wrapped up filming when he sort of got back online again? His nose was big. His chin was big. Like he was taking so much juice. Incredible. On the mic, Charles Sonnen was a god. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And it's crazy, right? Like, Chael Sonnen was three minutes away from beating Anderson Silva. <laughs> like, how nuts is that? To go back and look on MMA history. He was this close to being able to say, I beat Anderson Silva. Have you guys seen the recent videos of McGregor tweaking? I have not. I heard something about that while I was away, but I haven't seen the videos of it. Hey, Ozzy, I'm going back to swiping on Bumble. I'll be back later. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Find them. Catch them all. They're STDs. <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad. Shit. I'm sure I'll see it eventually on the, on the Twitter feed. If I type in uh, Connor, I might see it. Let's see. <clears throat> I think uh, Zalal is coming into the cage now. Chael thought the fight was over. I know, he let his hand off the gas for just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, uh, uh. Kind of got one end, doesn't it? Is this the one? This clip of Conor McGregor is very concerning. Conor's physical mental health, is he okay? Let's have a look. The stunt team, Garrett Warden and Steve Brown, and they were phenomenal with us. They were very... He was good to me and <laughs> I sometimes I had to remind him. <laughs> like... I, la I landed one punch. <laughs> Once. That was it on the and screen? he hit me with a door. <laughs> Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> That's it, true. An amazing stunt. A stunt team, Garrett Warden and Steve Brown, and they were phenomenal with us. They gave us free reign, and we've done a good job. For me, what was hard was it was time consuming. 18 hours on set. What is he doing? Very little rest. What is he doing? It was strange to me, but you know, the fight scenes, I was happy to give my input and my all. The dude has got and a Jake, migraine. As I He's said, he's a consummate professional. He's coming down. We've done a good job. He's coming down hard. I saw him at the premiere. At the premiere, he's doing this. Every time anyone asks him a question, he's doing this. And they know that he's been doing coke. All right, they're about to start the fight. They know that he's been doing coke. And this here is a man who is coming down off drugs. Yeah, that's not good, man. That is not good. What's on his head? Let me take another look quickly. Where are we at? 
tail of the tape. They're announcing the fight. All right, we've still got time. We've still got time, boys. We can do this together. Now, which bloody screen was it? This screen. I think it's a hat, mate. He was good to me and... Yeah, just his hat. Yeah. Yeah, just some um, half beanie. But dude, he's coming down hard off, off, off drugs. That's sad, man. He's not going to be an athlete again. He's never going to be an athlete again. Ever. He'll come back for a fun fight, but he'll never come back for an a be a proper athlete. Michael Chandler is going to destroy him if that fight happens. Absolutely destroy him. All right, we got some call outs happening. Billy weighed in 145. Billy Quarantillo is getting called out right in now. In 23 fights, his record stands at 18 victories yep. with five defeats. Fighting out of Tampa, my, Florida. Here him off, otherwise we would get copyright Hard. stroke. There we go. Get my clock up. My big, fat, thick clock. Yeah, I did it just for, so we could line up, boys. Thanks, Saduka. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Hottest ring girl. I'll know her when I see her. I'll know her when I see her. I have an answer. I can't think of her name right now. But I'll point her out when I see her. Gorlack the Destroyer is my favorite ring girl. <laughs> based. Based. Unfathomably based. You love the blonde Aussie? She was up just before, wasn't she, in the last fight? Round two. AZ, I never even pay attention, man. That's because you're Muslim, Muhammad. It's haram. You focus on the bigger things in life. Like, Habib was just being Habib. He was being as honest as he could be about it. He's like, what is the point, brother? What do they do? A screen does what they do, brother. <laughs> Muhammad's just sitting there angrily fasting. <laughs> you never know, the sun could be down. The funny thing is you're the biggest sinner. I mean, we're all sinners. No one lives by any of the books. <laughs> the ring girls get paid more than Herb Dean. Let that sink in. Good. The ring girls can't fuck up a fight. Oof, that overhand from Quarantillo is going to catch Zalal. I think I'm going to get a pick right here. I eat bacon. Oh, that is the most haram. <laughs> Bacon burger. <laughs> Bro is a Herb hater. I'm not a Herb. I mean, I did make an entire video trashing Herb Dean. Oh, nice shots up the center from Zalal. Really nice shots up the center. Beautiful one two from Zalal. Let us enjoy this fight that is presenting itself to, to us, boys. For once, we've got a good fight happening at the Apex. Actually, made a few good fights on this card, yeah? We gave this card a lot of shit, but the scraps have been quite good. Mark Smith was a uh, fighter pilot. Jason Herzog is the best ref. Jason Herzog is the best ref. You're absolutely correct. Let's end this poll. That was fun. We had a good time with it. Get out of here, poll. No nonsense, Keith Peterson. <laughs> Looks like a thumb. Oh, nice little trip there. If this was 1FC, he could have soccer kicked him. What's the name of that ref that's a fucking uh, dwarf from Lord of the Rings? Got the mustache that he has to tuck into his um, pants. Ready to fight! Ready to fight! Go! What's his name? I like him too. He's good. 
Nice knockdown. We're on. Yeah, no, this is good. This is good. We got a good fight. UFC needs soccer kicks. I agree, man. It's we should take the rule set from one championship or old school pride, and bring it over to the UFC. Stupid rule, hand or knee on the ground. I know it is. It fucking slows the wrestling down so much. It's horrible. The more tools you can use on the ground, the more we can open the wrestling up and get past this ridiculous base of Russian and American wrestling in the UFC. The UFC's meta. I like Billy Q's um, work on trying to get out from underneath, the way he's trying to roll himself around. See how he's trying to get his feet on the hips? He's constantly working to try and get away from this position, but he keeps running into the cage. Salal's got the back nicely. Billy Q's just got to keep working, stay calm, get his hands on the wrists, get his hands on the wrists, get his hands on the wrists. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Peel it away. You got 15 seconds, Billy. Do not quit. It's just a crank. It's not under the chin. It's just pain. Nice. That was nice. That was fun, man. Billy, you put money on Billy. That happens, mate. It's all right. It's not over. It's not over, man. It's not over. He can, he can get himself back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. We're going to start back up on the feet. It was nice on the feet. Billy was doing good on the feet. Until until he wasn't, until the knockdown. But it's still even on the feet. You think he's looking horrible? You don't think he was doing well? I think he was doing well until he, like, he was landing good shots. And then obviously he got knocked down. Which probably rocked him. Billy almost got the gilly and he was doing worse on the floor. He was doing worse on the floor probably because of the concussion that knocked him down. Zalal's feeling himself though, isn't he? You see that little exchange between them before the fight starts? We're off. We're off and running. 55, 56. For some reason, he flinches. He's biting on all the feints. Good body shot from Billy. Misses the overswing. What time is it for you? I'll tell you in one second. It's 35, 34, 33. Oh, yeah, Billy's done. Yeah, he's going to lose. <clears throat> uh, it is 1.45 in the afternoon. One forty-five in the afternoon. Mohammed, you're absolutely right with that read, mate. The legs. The legs. Paying attention to the legs. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday here. So we left for camping Friday morning. Camped all weekend. Woke up 7 o'clock this morning. Drove home. Got the Maccas sitting down with you boys, having a damn good time. Watching Billy Quarantillo get the fuck beaten out of him. 10.45 p.m. on Saturday night for you. That's not bad, man. It's a nice Saturday night. At least this card hasn't been horrible. It's been kind of fun. He's chasing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look how much time is left on the clock. Oh, mate, he's got him here. Oh, that's under the chin as well. Yep, 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 yep. Good night, Billy. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. 
71 percent of people were picking Quan Tillo, guys. Does Nathan Jones terrorize the outback? <laughs> Camels terrorize the outback. 35. 35, huh? For Billy Q. See ya. See ya. Cameron Simon, next, boys. I'm picking Peyton Talbot, but we got Cameron Simon next. The MMA guru's love interest. <laughs> Can't lie, I should have trusted the stats. Oh shit, let me catch up. Let me catch up. Let me catch up. Where did you find that stat on um, uh, Tapology? Are you a fan of Jack Jenkins? I'm a massive fan of Jack Jenkins. I hope his elbow heals properly. Properly. Can't lie. Should have trusted the stats. You have camels. Australia is full of camels. I think it has like the largest wild camel population in the world, or one of them. You went in for an upset because it made more money. You're chasing the underdog, brother. You'd like to ride camels on the beach in Broome in Western Australia? I want to do a camel camping trip. Take a bunch of camels across the desert, go camping for like a week. I reckon that'd be cool. Me and Jamie, we did a uh, canoe camping trip earlier this year. We canoed like 50 kilometers to the South Australian border and camped on the banks every night. That was pretty sick. So I want to do that with camels. Paddy Pimlet, funny guy. Paddy Pimlet is a funny guy. You fucking sausage, mate. Tony Ferguson is a fucking sausage, mate. Cameron and Drickus have ghosted the Guru. Is Guru going against Cameron Simon? Mate, how dare he? How dare he? They said, fuck him. Dougie, did MMA Guru pick Cameron? I don't know, man. I don't know. I would assume he did, right? How could he not pick his boy? Alhamdulillah. Jank Jenkins has the nastiest kicks, man. I know. He was the pride and joy of, of Eternal, wasn't he? He was the pride and joy of Eternal. This one's 50-50 down the middle. The next one, Cameron Simon. Ever been to Broome? I've not been to Broome. My little brother has. He was uh, posted out in Western Australia. Amazing beaches in Australia. Amazing. Pablo, what's up, brother? How you going, man? Jack Jenkins, bro I think he broke seven legs. Just from memory, I think he broke seven legs in Eternal, which is fucking crazy. Crazy, man. Would you ever sign a fight with a kid that broke seven legs? Pablo, what's going on? Uh, I got back from camping this morning, man. Sat in the car for a couple of hours. I got the worst beanie here in the world. And now I'm here, chilling with you boys. Watching MMA, having a good time. Pablo. There is a Discord link in the description of this video. So I will be notifying you guys through Discord when I have time to go live. So if you want to be more involved with the channel and post memes and have a fucking good time and chill with the boys, there's a Discord link, brother. Broom isn't far from Indonesia. So true, man. So true. So true. Um, Australia has really, really cheap flights. Broom isn't far from Indonesia. 50 Gs, baby! Let's go! Alhamdulillah. Um, it's really cheap flights to go from Australia to Thailand. And that's obviously the home of Tiger Muay Thai, the home of one championship. So next time, I'm going to go to Thailand this year. I want to, or next year. The next two years, I want to go to Thailand and go watch one live go watch one live and go visit Tiger Muay Thai. And I was thinking I might like, we might do like a bit of a light vlog or something or like some behind the scenes stuff or whatever. But yeah, it'll be cool. Did you see any cool animals on your trip? In this one, just a couple of 
kookaburras. On the last one on the canoe trip, we saw kangaroos, koalas, kookaburras. There was a seal that was next to us while we were canoeing. That was pretty fucking sick. There's no bears in Australia, which is why Australia is the best for camping. Because as long as you don't get bitten by a spider on your dick while you're taking a piss, you'll be fine. But you might get bitten by a spider on your dick while you're taking a piss and that will kill you. Uh, been to Thailand a bunch of times. Been to Thailand a bunch of times. I love Thailand. But next time I go, I want to like do stuff for, for the channel. Fini cheese, baby! Hamdulillah! Broom is so fucking hot. Yeah, it is, man. It is. I've never been there, but like WA, I can I can tell like from just the weather report, it, it's always fucking hot up there. And I've been to WA, which is in the same state, but just down the bottom of the island, not the top of the island. And it's fucking boiling everywhere, man. Your friends are in Thailand at the moment and loving it. My brother pretty much like lives in Thailand, man. He loves it, man. He loves it. I should train at Phuket. I shouldn't train at all. I'm an old man, mate. I'll, I'll break my fucking limbs, brother. I shouldn't. I sh could do fitness training there. Like just work out and do some like basic training. But yeah, I love Thailand. Ever been to Tasmania? Crazy animals. I uh, was just on a cruise down to Tasmania, but I didn't get off the ship. It was too windy for us to port. So I just looked at Tasmania <laughs> from the deck. <laughs> you hate spiders. That's so do I. So do I. I got a can of fucking. I got a can of bug spray right here under the desk, just in case, man. Because you never know when a big one is going to jump out at you and eat you. <clears throat> you stayed at a hotel in Omeo, Victoria, and they told me to check the states. At... That is correct. We were camping at Omeo in our van, and a fucking giant huntsman got into our van and crawled in through the door while we were um, waking up and making our breakfast. So me and Jamie are sitting in this tiny ass van making breakfast and this fucking spider crawls out from behind the kitchen in Omeo. You just joined the service? Sick, man. Nice. I don't know how to use it yet, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to notify you guys. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be fun. Tasmania is really cool. Never seen clips like that. It was a beautiful landscape from the boat. <laughs> we could see like the horizon, the cliffs and everything. It looks nice, but I don't, we do want to go back. There's a boat that leaves from our city that goes to Tasmania and we want to put our camper van on it and do a lap of Tasmania. That's our dream trip coming up. But we have a lot of dream trips coming up. We like, that's pretty much what we do. We love going traveling. Yeah, a lot of Australia is like that. Because we only have three cities, three big cities, when you're out in the bush, Mason, Omeo, crazy stars at night. As you know, man, like we've got our main three cities, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane. But when you're out in the bush, because there's so little out there, the stars just shine through. It's nuts, man. What happens if a huntsman spider bites you? A huntsman actually is nothing. Huntsmans don't hurt you at all. It's a red back and a white tail that will... They can kill you. Yeah. Severo bit his opponent. Bit his fucking opponent. And now they're kicking him out of the UFC. The UFC is cutting Severo for biting his opponent. How fucking crazy is that, man? How crazy is that? Omeo is a very quiet and small town. It is, man. It is. It's lovely. Uh, we want to do all of it, dude. We want to, you should go to New Zealand next. We like, we want to do a lap of, we want to do a whole lap of Australia, whole lap of Tasmania. We want to do a road trip in New Zealand. We want to do a road trip in Southeast Asia. Oh, the bunch, man. Piotr Jan fights from Tiger Muay Thai. That's right. That's right. I'd love to go down there and visit them. So as Cam Canberra is an average size city, I think it's like a hundred thousand people, but it's, run by the politicians it's a po it's a politician city so politicians from all over the world from all over australia will fly in and out of canberra during the week it's a very weird city i've been there once before you've been camping once and heard coyotes don't know but I don't, yeah i i'm gonna struggle with camping in america because of the bears and the coyotes like we don't have that in australia so I think when I go to America, I'm going to rent a big ass four wheel drive RV truck with metal doors. 
and hide behind metal. Same thing in Colorado, you see all the stars. Yeah, yeah, Huntsman can't buy people. He bought so he, he, go go back on Fight Pass, Muhammad, and um, watch the fight, man. He fucking bit him over. I can't play the replay here. There's the replay there on Twitter. I'll save it for you and post it in the um, Discord, but I can't play the replay. Otherwise, the stream will get shut down. But yeah, man. Go to Wellington. It's the best city in the world. Wellington, New Zealand. I will. It's on the list. It's absolutely on the list. Yeah. You got to YouTube the video of the bite. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Down there. You'll find it. You'll find it. Wellington is a lot like California. Is it? Nice. Nice. Is that bad though? Because isn't California kind of messy? Like, isn't there a lot of um, homeless in California? Haven't been to Tas Tasmania, AZ. Haven't been. Took a cruise down there last week, two weeks ago. But um, it was too windy for us to pull into the port. So we just looked at Tasmania, <laughs> unfortunately. Dang, he bit his opponent on his debut and he got cut. It is what, like, you cannot be biting people, man. It's so, like, does he deserve to get cut? That's a good question, right? That's an interesting question, right? Like if you bite someone, do you just fucking cut them from the organization or is it like 12 month ban? You're not allowed to fight for 12 months. Like what is the right penalty? <clears throat> Canberra gets fucking freezing. It is up in the mountains. They literally picked it to be in the middle of Melbourne and Sydney and put it up in the mountains. It's nuts, man. You can't really camp in Florida. There's too many bugs. Hey, you guys bag Australians. And we have snapping turtles that bite your fingers off. This is what I'm talking about. It's nuts. It's nuts that you guys make fun of us for everything wanting to kill you in Australia. Talbot is such a phenomenal striker. <clears throat> Peyton Talbot is awesome. Mason, Mason, Talbot is such a phenomenal striker. I am looking at him like a young and upcoming Tony Ferguson. He just thinks and acts so differently to everything around him. To me, he is the next Tony Ferguson. That's just how I look at him. Lot of homeless in California, maybe in LA. Oh, you meant that Wellington just has the same weather and landscape as San Francisco. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but their states are a cesspool of bull crap. Yeah, that, that seems to be the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Christchurch was cool. Brad Rudell is there. It's amazing how many sick MMA fighters are coming out of New Zealand, yeah? He ain't Mike Tyson, Muhammad. He ain't Mike Tyson. He hasn't built enough prestige to just go and fucking bite people. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, shit. Paul Hogan got into our tent and stabbed us. What the fuck are you talking about? I can post the bite mark in the Discord if anyone wants to see. Chuck it in, mate. Chuck it in the Discord. You saw the bite mark, but not the video. I will bookmark the video and chuck it in the Discord if no one else does. I've got it saved here. You have a lot of... We don't have a lot of poisonous animals. Yeah, you've just got animals that will fucking bite you and kill you. And we have like a couple of little poisonous ones that will, that will fuck you up. Peyton Talbot is so different. The next Tony for sure. Mason, good. I don't, I'm happy that I'm not crazy on that. Coyotes are about 30 pounds. Fuck that. Fuck that. Go camping in upstate New York. I'm going to go camping fucking everywhere. When we get back over there and we have a van, we are going to go camping everywhere. I'm just going to need a nice big metal shell and maybe get Jamie, since she is an American citizen, to buy a shotgun. <laughs> Coyotes are like dogs, not much unless it's in a pack and they never attack. Okay. You love coyote hunting. 
No shit. I didn't even know that was an option, man. That's nuts. It's a shame because California is so nice, but politics kind of ruined it, especially up north in San Francisco. Yeah, there's a lot of places like that, isn't there? There's a lot of places like that. You've been to a lot of countries, Mason, but New Zealand was one of the best because the weather was perfect for hiking. And it looks like, I mean, they shot Lord of the Rings there, right? Like it must be phenomenal to go hiking there. LA is lit. Is it like, is it just fun to be at? Like the culture is sick. New Zealand, incredibly remote, like as far down on the earth as you can get before you hit Antarctica. Okay. It's not true, right? Coyotes near cities are aggressive. You're 225 pounds, your dog's 90 pounds and they come at them because they have babies nearby. I think if an animal has babies, it's in nature is going to be aggressive, right? It's just expensive and there's a lot of people there who don't like anyone. Melbourne's like that. Melbourne's very expensive and the um, culture here is very, um, what's the right word? Clicky. It's a very clicky culture in Melbourne. You and Jamie should hike Mount Cook on the South Island of New Zealand. It's part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. We're building it, man. Damn, you guys are so nice with the 12 month ban, 75%. Yeah, let's end this. Where did we get? Where did we get the Mike Tyson rule? Jeez, yeah, you guys didn't want to cut him. Nice, nice. Dang, coyotes never attack me in my city. Maybe it's because they had the baby. Cameron Simon! The guru's first girlfriend, boyfriend is walking out. Guru's love, guru's love of his life is walking out. I'm excited for Cameron, man. He's up against the young Tony Ferguson. It's going to be sick. Don't, the bite didn't draw blood. Give him a long ass suspension. <laughs> Does whether or not it draws blood matter? <laughs> oh, man. Invasive iguanas in Florida plus invasive Floridians. <laughs> Dude, Florida? Florida sounds like what you guys think Australia is. Florida's like with alligators and iguanas and sharks and, you know, Floridians. Like it, the, Florida sounds like a Grand Theft Auto server gone wrong, man. You still go to Los Angeles a lot and it's safe by the beach, but not in downtown. I think every city has that sort of side to it. Like there's suburbs in Melbourne you should not go to because you will get stabbed by a crackhead. I think everywhere is like that, you know. Saduka, so you're nice, man. In Florida, the overgrades... There's pythons, there's gators. This is what I'm saying. Fuck Florida. It's fucking crazy. It's full of crazy people. That's why only Republicans can live there. You've got to be mad in the head. You got to have a certain edge to you. Liberals can't live in Florida. It's not safe enough for them. You two are chatting about this. In your opinion, if you allow them to stay, it sends the wrong message, but fair enough. I'm going to punch through some of this so we can catch up. Melbourne was the coolest city I've been to in Australia. Melbourne's massive. It's like, it's probably, it should be Australia's main city, that or Sydney. I would maybe consider it if he was a dominant fighter with fan power. You're from Canada. We're forgetting. Very similar to California wise. I'm the only one who voted to cut. <laughs> Perth is really nice, but it is very remote and there is no population there. If there wasn't mining going on in Perth, the city would be dead. But luckily... They can really, really mine. Why did he have to bite him? That's true. There was no reason for the bite. Aussie chicks are the hottest. Not true. Not true. Uh, it was just a love mark. <laughs> Mason, what's the most dangerous area of Melbourne? Either uh, Frankston or Footscray. There's so many crackheads down there. They, you, will, you will get stabbed and robbed. Yeah. Come to Sakonchwin, Sakachwin, Sakachwin. We have the biggest white tailed deer. I want to go to Canada too. We want to travel the world, mate. You're from America. Now you live in London. I'm from London town. Went from one group of holes to another. Don't say America. Don't, don't say America. Say us like Borat, technically from Canada or America. 
So we don't tolerate slip-ups like fucking bites. BC is pretty much Asia at this point. Ugh. Vancouver, Washington, or BC. I have lost track of what the fuck you guys are talking about. You must be chatting amongst yourselves, which is great. I love it. Oh, God. All right. Fight night. Talbot, Simon, Taylor the Tape is on. Dollar at 5'10. We highlight the three and a half inch engine. The There's a bit of audio. Out of Reno, Nevada, who was undefeated. And There's Joe Martinez. And that's enough. Otherwise, we are going to get clipped. Talbot. Boom. 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 Dead even, pretty much, on topology. California and BC have a high Asian culture due to the Pacific culture, just like East Coast is European-ish. Fair enough. When's the next time you're going to a UFC event? I've never been to a UFC event. I've never been to a UFC event. I've been to Muay Thai events in Thailand, in Thailand and I'm going to try and go to some local um, eternal events this year. But yeah. That was the Aussie chick, the walkout girl, yeah? That you were talking about before? What the hell does MSP even stand for? Who's the schoolboy? The schoolboy is the next, is the next Tony Ferguson. Fuck Florida. Florida seems sick, man. Florida seems like a place for crazy people to live. I like it. Floridians swim to Cuba for safety. I've not watched any street beefs, but it's the backyard bare knuckle brawling, yeah? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Great leg kick from Talbun. What are those tattoos again? Every time, Talbun, what are those tattoos? Nice body kick from Cameron. Guru will be sweating this fight. <laughs> Peyton paints his toenails. Does he? Oh, why? Western Mass, what's up, brother? Welcome to the chat, mate. Does Peyton Talbot paint his nails? Why does he do this? Maybe he's just like that goth kid, you know, that wears eyeliner, paints his toenails. I remember when I had my goth phase when I was a teenager. I had black fingernails. I was fucking cool, man. <laughs> Chat is so hard to see with this background. Oh, it knocks him down. How's that Western Mass? Is that easier? Oh shit! Oh shit! Peyton Talbot striking is so good. Chris Tyone, get out of the way. Uh, Western Mass is that hard? Is that easier? Dude, Simon is getting the fucking shit beaten out of him. You painted your nail. When I, I went through like a goth era in, in high school, when I was like 14, it was like a year, I was like a goth for a year. I painted my, I painted my nails black and listened to a lot of Marilyn Manson, man. I was a dark kid. <laughs> he's wobbled, you guys. Guys, he's wobbled. He's wobbling him, you guys. That knee wobbled him. And he wa I can't believe Cameron's still in this fight, guys. This is so sick. Simon has got a chin, bro. They build him differently in South Africa. Oh, Jesus, that head kick. Jesus Christ. Where am I at? Western Mass. Thank you. You're welcome, Western Mass. 
Guys, no likes. Weston is the king of streams, mate. He knows what's going on. AZ, do Australians like Izzy? No. We know what Izzy is. He's a chameleon. South Africa might be deadlier than Florida. They might make them strong down there out of fucking concrete. Bro. That knee, they just showed it in the replay down the bottom corner there, didn't they? How is he still going, man? You need to see Drickus get knocked out. You're not a Drickus fan, huh? Oh, nice spinning back kick from Cameron. Incredible how he's been able to, like, clear the cobwebs. Look, now on with his hands as well. He's blocking properly. Look at that. Finds the shot, the looping left. That's fun. That's fun. That's fun. That's fun. Man, Talbot is such a different bloke. He's such a different kid. He needs to fight Pereira after UFC 300. Drickus? No, Drickus needs to defend, mate. Drickus is a beast, man. Do the dick twist! That clock is obviously wrong. All right, there's 50 seconds left. I'll reset the clock in the next round. If we get to the next round, lads. Twist his dick! Twist it! Oh my god, dude. That's an MMA fight, dude. It's an MMA fight. Calm down, dude. I love Whitaker. Me too, man. He's one of my favorite fighters. Except I think he's lost the edge. I'm not going to lie. I love Whitaker. But I think he's lost the edge. The eye of the tiger? No mas. <laughs> Pause. Ooh, that cheeky little knee up the center again. And Cameron's overthrowing the left and Talbot's just rising the knee to meet him. Have I ever seen a UFC fighter? No. No. My brother was in Sydney. Why does my brother live such a good life? Fuck my brother. Fuck him. <laughs> my brother was in Sydney and... He saw um, Dan Hooker and all the boys from CKB. Izzy wasn't with them, but he saw um, Dan Hooker and all the boys from CKB rolling around. And he said they looked like a pack of fucking psychos <laughs> when they're just walking around the street. Like they're all tall and covered in tattoos and he knows that they can kick the shit out of them. Yeah, man. Sick. Peyton is, so, Peyton is the next Tony Ferguson. He's just different in the head. Like, he's different. Yeah, the nails thing. I look, hopefully he's going through a phase. <laughs> right? Hopefully he's going through a phase. But I don't know if it is. We'll see. Hopefully he's gonna grow up into a man. Who knows? You met GSP in Montreal? That's sick, man. That's so sick. You guys have a blast, I gotta go. Western Mass, thanks for joining, man. Thanks for joining while you could. I appreciate it, brother. Does that suck for all of you guys in chat? Is that not fun? Like, should I get rid of that? Let me know. Oh, Jesus, Simon. Oh. Guys. Oh, Simon. Yeah, 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 it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. <laughs> Sick fight. Dude, Peyton Talbot. Yeah. Muhammad, good ref. Weston, see you, brother. Thanks for stopping in, man. Den Hooker versus Poirier might have been the best UFC fights as well as Kazma versus Burns. They are amazing, amazing fights. So fucking good to watch. Yeah, it was a good stoppage. It was a good stoppage. I agree. <laughs> the Afro strength. Because you could call it early. You could call it early because Cameron is sort of defending. Like you can see he's got his feet on the hips and he's covering up as well. When he's not looking for a way out, he's covering up as well. But there is like just an acceptance of the fact that Simon is beaten. Like he's just beaten at this point. 
That was a fair stoppage. Nice. What was that one fight where after a round, both fighters are all bloodied and instead of going back to the corner, they look at each other and want to go and fight. I remember it, but I don't remember their names. But they're both beaten up at the, like, it could be McDonald versus Lawler, yeah. Where they're like, they're all smashed open. But I think there was one at Flyweight as well. They're both smashed open and they point to the canvas in the middle. They point to the center of the canvas and they both just start fucking over swinging and over hooks and just raining down on each other. It was fucking epic. I watched that back in the early days when I used to have to go to the pub to watch the fights. And the whole pub started cheering and losing their shit. So fun. But I, I think that was at Flyweight. So I don't think it was a Robbie Lawler. That was sick. Peyton Talbot is the future. Oh no, don't show it. Boom. <clears throat> ah. your mom's your girlfriend's mom dated gary goodrich that's crazy <laughs> rory never recovered how could you guys forget it was an epic scene robbie wasn't robbie wasn't messes robbie want messes dougie's corner what fight was this repeat that please i can't i don't remember who the fighters were. I remember the moment. So this would have been back in 2016 or 2017 because I, I was at a pub watching it and they were in the lighter weight class. It was definitely below lightweight. So it could have been flyweight, could have been featherweight. And we had gotten all the way to the third round. Both the fighters were fucked, covered in blood. And they point to the canvas like this. They go, and the other one goes, and they start just throwing crazy ass overhands at each other and swinging like fucking maniacs. So, yeah, I just, and then the whole crowd, we were all like everyone in the pub just started cheering and screaming. It was such a fun moment. One of like those early moments when I first started getting into MMA and really like making sure that I got down to the pub every single weekend to watch it. So that was for me one of those moments where both the fighters were like bloodied and just like, fuck it, let's go for this. It could be Max Holloway. In the back of my head, I was like, was that Max Holloway? Yeah, like a young Max Holloway? Could be. And then and then I was thinking, was that Max Holloway versus Korean Zombie? But it wasn't Max Holloway versus Korean Zombie. It was it definitely wasn't. So I don't know. Could be. Goodrich was a good Canadian man. What are your thoughts on weed, Dougie? You need to have all your other ducks in a row before if before you start smoking weed. You shouldn't be a young man smoking weed without all your ducks in a row, your career, your personal life, your spirituality. Weed is, to me, it seems like uh, it can be an excuse drug. Like it just, you, it, you become comfortable sitting around doing nothing when you smoke weed, I find, in general. Robbie wasn't messed up like Rory. That wasn't the one where he had that big split open lip, was it? Goodridge was an arm wrestling champ too. Did you arm wrestle him? Did you ask for an arm wrestler? Used to love Randleman. Yeah, that's Max Holloway for sure, but I'm not sure the other one that he's talking about. His thighs the size of a waist. <laughs> Fair enough. Biggest facts. Are we talking about the weed, whether or not I'm talking facts? That's why you quit. Yeah, fair. You're smoking some right now, but when I'm done working and I'm chilling, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's like drinking. Like, you know, you can just sit at home drinking six packs and not doing shit. But like, if you've done your work and you've got something planned for tomorrow and everything's chugging along the way it should be, life is ticking over the way that it should be chilling, then you can have a bit of weed. You can have a bit of a beer. You can, I might have a bit of a beer now, you know? Fuck it. <laughs> but I'm saying like, there's a time and a place for everything. And I find like a lot of young kids get into smoking weed too early. It limited you. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
harm Sudurko. Fair enough. Never knew that. Never met him. Fair enough. Who I got for the next fight? That's a fucking great question. Let's stop talking about weed. Start talking about real things like men in their underwear beating each other up. I got Dobson next. But I do think it's going to be a uh, fucking close fight. I do think it's going to be a damn close fight. I got Dobson next. <clears throat> Edmund Shabazian. Jeez, look at this, man. Everyone thinks Shabazian's going to win. And I'm here picking Dobson like a moron. Well, I just think Dobson's got the power. <clears throat> Can we agree that weed in proportion is better than prescription meds for anxiety? I think the best thing for anxiety is work, is work. Work to, is setting goals and then working towards achieving those goals. And when you're doing those things, they calm your anxiety down, I find. I get very, very anxious when I'm sitting around not doing anything. But when I like set up things to do and I go ahead and achieve those things, even if it's like going out and camping with friends or going on road trips with the girlfriend or like doing this, it sort of calms down anxiety. But I think anxiety comes from like a feeling of dissatisfaction with what one is doing. And once you like think about that and then work on the next step, it sort of helps calm that anxiety down. UFC 300 trailer looks fucking sick. I only smoke gluten-free crack. <laughs> well, as long as there's no gluten in your crack. Uh, how is Edmund the favorite? Look, right here on the screen. Most people on Tapology are picking Edmund. Crazy, man. Is Dana on steroids? Because he um, released a video recently about his training and lifestyle and everyone in the comments is saying, I'll save you the eight minutes, it's steroids. I think Dana White is probably on testosterone replacement because he's like 60 years old or something, 50 or 60 years old. So he's probably on testosterone replacement. I know, I know. But yet somehow people think Shabazian's going to win. He's four and one in his last five. I know, crazy. 100%. You smoked for 10 years, gonna disagree with that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> if you have major depressive anxiety, you need to get to a certain level first, you feel. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's, I mean, I'm, look, listen, man, I'm a fucking plasterer and a painter, all right, not a doctor, but I think young men uh, designed to do things like we have testosterone in us to push us forward and do things and the world the modern world that we live in is very nerfed and it's very rounded edges and can lead to depression so like i wonder what's causing the depressive anxiety and maybe it can be like guided from with from within rather than with prescription drugs or with weed but again i'm just a fucking plasterer i don't know Dana said he is. He's probably on testosterone replacement. Probably. Anxiety worsens if you have zero social interactions as well. That is true. That is true. Again, I think, I think in men, it's about doing things. We're, we're designed to do things. Have you seen Dana 20 years ago? He was a fucking potato. <laughs> I'm Jewish. So anxiety is in my DNA. You never know when it's going to happen again. <laughs> I think weed is terrible, uh, Muhammad. I think weed is terrible because it numbs you too much and it doesn't force you to change your situation. It just makes you comfy with the status quo. That's what I think so too. I, that, and that's dangerous. That's what I think so too. I agree that I use excuse. Eh, I agree. I use exercise for anxiety and the odd case of beer. <laughs> I think we're on the same anti-anxiety diet. AZ. <laughs> I'll work out most days, but then also I'll fucking drink a slap. <laughs> I agree and I smoke. I think, guy, I think like when it comes to this stuff, whether it's like weed, alcohol, how you deal with anxiety, prescription drugs, I think what the most important thing is, is that you think about it for yourself and weigh how you are compared to like 
some doctor or some fucking Andrew Tate, some guru, like telling you what you need. Like you think about it yourself and in your own life and how it affects you. I, like a little bit of introspection will give you the right answer on how to navigate how you should be handling those drugs. Once you know yourself, then you'll know how to navigate. So yeah, everything in moderation. Yeah, there are just things like that, Mo. There are just things like that. Like once you quit them, you'll like wake up from a haze. You're like, why the fuck was I doing this, man? Why was I doing this? And like, you know, again, I'm j I don't know shit, you know? You enjoyed shrooms? So did I. Oh, man. <laughs> That'll clear your head. <laughs> Pablo, got to go? See you, brother. I'll be posting in the Discord to let you guys know when, um, when I'm going live. You have a good night, man. You have a good night. It's been fun. Saduka, yeah, brother. Give yourself a month and see how you feel. And then give yourself like the grace to be like, I'm only going to quit for a month and then I can jump back on because it will make quitting for that month easier. If you, if, if, rather than going cold turkey and be like, I'm never fucking doing it again, give yourself a month and then be like, do I really want to go back? You know, it sort of makes it easier, bro. AZ, it made me very introspective and closer to my dog. I love AZ will say something very, uh, um, like, very deep and then be like, and also gluten free crack. <laughs> I like it, but I don't do crazy amounts just at night. See you, Pablo. Have a good night, brother. Peyton is sick, Mason. Peyton is sick. That was such a good fight, wasn't it? That was such a good fight. He's the next Tony Ferguson, I feel. I feel like he is on that next level. You don't really feel the effects of quitting something until about one or two months after. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's go train with Izzy. Don't bring your dog though. I am not going anywhere near Izzy. <laughs> he fucked Cameron. I know, man. He's fucking nuts, dude. Poor Cameron Simon got the shit beaten out of him. But I feel like he grinded his way back towards the end of that first round really well after being so concussed. <laughs> Peyton is sick, but he paints his toenails. He's going to grow out of it. He's going to grow out of it, Mohammed. All right, he will. Cameron, 23, taking that much brain damage is not good. Facts. <laughs> Let's take a trip across the ditch and train with the CKB crew. I would rather go to Thailand and train with Tiger Muay Thai and then drink $2 bintangs afterwards at night on Bungao Road. You felt bad for him? Yeah, dude, it was a rough. He got the shit kicked out of him. If you send your dog to Izzy, it ain't coming back. It's coming back a changed dog. It's going to have that look in its eyes. It's seen things. Bro, where are the fights? Oh, they're coming, man. These first round knockouts, second round knockouts. You take 20 minutes between. But um, and Jobson just walked into the ring. Edmund Shabazian is running into the ring now. Somehow he's the favorite on Tapology. I don't fucking know. Mate, you're going to have a litter of half dogs, half izzies. <laughs> AZ, coming back pregnant. And my guru is crying. I know, his boyfriend just got the shit kicked out of him. Izzy is a great counter-striker. But he's an odd bloke. You know, we can't deny that. He's an odd, odd bloke. Maybe coming back pregnant. Jesus. Anime, baby. <laughs> Imagine it's got the, 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 the body of a dog, of a German shepherd, but with the face of Israel Adesanya. <laughs> Edmund has talent, but Brunson broke him. That is a sad thing to say, that Derek fucking Brunson broke someone. You know? Fuck, look at this. Derek Brunson, Jack Hermanson, Nassadina Mabel. Just, this is not, this is a high level competition that he's losing to, you know? You know what I'm saying, lads? How is he the favorite? AJ Dobson, 32, prime age. 
Well, let's see what happens. This is why we watch the sport now, lads. You know, this is why. Ah, oh. three flights left. Am I going to grab a beer? Fucking Justin Tupper versus Carl Williams. This fight card is so shit. <laughs> this is such a shit fight card. Carl Williams is next against Justin Tuffer. Oh, what a shit card. Izzy was good at striking, but what's going on in his head? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Izzy... I think, you know, he's a little kid that wanted to grow up to be a dancer and got pushed into fighting MMA instead. That is someone who you could say, like, didn't follow their introvert, like, didn't listen to what they wanted and got forced into something else because that is how he acts. He acts like a character. He doesn't act like himself. Can't lie, fighting AJ Dobson might give him PTSD. (laughs) He got KO'd. He's different now. He's going to be having fucking flashbacks. Is Edmund Ronda Rousey's old coach? No. What? No. Ronda Rousey's old coach is head movement. Head movement. Shabazian, usually the first fight I get into in UFC 4 career mode. Bro, we're not doing light heavyweight on UFC 4? You got to be doing light heavyweight. Follow that Conor McGregor path. You know what I'm saying? All right. Red Dea La Cruz. She's just walked out of the ring. Fight's on. Let's go. I am looking at my timer. I will click start when we get to four minutes, 30 seconds. Thanks for joining me on the stream today, boys, by the way. It's been fun. It's been a damn good stream. Oh, nice hand straight away from Dobson. 44, 43, 42, 41. I'm counting up to 30. Great hands from Dobson. Three, two, one. Go, Dougie, go. Go, Dougie, go, go, go. Go, Dougie, go, go. Dougie, go. Shabazzin's back has never seen direct sunlight. The lights in the apex might be too bright for his skin, mate. You're getting sunburn off the apex lights. Dobson, checking them kicks. Nice one, too, from Dobson. Shabazian seems scared to engage, yes? Shabazian seems scared to engage. There we go. Now, but Shabazian engages and Dobson makes him pay for it. Checked leg kick from Dobson. <clears throat> Oof. Oh, nice. Wobbled him. Shabazzian engages. Dobson hurts him on the return. Wraps up a gilly. Nice knee to the head. Nice hook as well. That's beautiful. Shabazzian is fucked. Shabazian is fucked. Oh, Shabazian takes Dobson down. Is he just going to wrestle fuck him? How's Dobson going to go? Guys, I took a screenshot of the match. Put it on Discord. What the hell is wrong with Edmund's body? Go, go, go. MMA, man. I'm telling you, MMA. Anything can happen, man. Hey, look at us in the bloody Discord saying hi to everyone. I hadn't opened it up yet. Ah, oh, Muhammad, they're called inverted ribs, brother. His ribs are growing out um, in the opposite direction. It's just genetic, mate. It's like, um, oh, what's his name? Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett's got the same ribs. They scare the shit out of me because I feel like someone can just kick the fuck out of them and break them.
Go, Dougie, go, go. <laughs> you pulled a Marilyn Manson, AZ. You got rid of your last three ribs so you could suck yourself off. Ooh, good posting from Dobson, yeah? Messy, messy. All right, now we're back into space. Let's see if Dobson's going to make him pay for all that wrestling. Nice. Landed that overhand. Shabazzian comes crashing back in. No wonder he's scared to engage. Oh, yeah, when you can suck the weight right out of you. Brilliant. But the problem is you're swallowing it again, I guess. Unless you're spitting. Then you're losing the weight. Because if you're swallowing, you're just, putting the, you're just recirculating the weight, aren't you? Oh! Shabazzian with the hands. Can Dobson hold on? It's over. <laughs> Mate, he earned that win, didn't he? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, my fucking picks have been dog shit. Oh, my picks are so dog shit. <laughs> I am the fucking worst of picking fights today. He fucking earned that win. Fucking oath he did. Jesus. That was sick. God, I love this sport. Fuck, I love this sport, man. Fuck golf. Bang, bang. He was winning all the exchanges. Shabazian just goes, no, I'm not fucking losing. I'm not losing. Shabazian just decides to win. Finds the body, then finds the overhand. Body, then overhand. Did you see that on the replay there? The body shot moves Dobson back, and then he instantly crashes in with the overhand and just fucking punishes him. The bro is trying to tell the paramedics that he wasn't out. <laughs> I still don't understand why Dana loves boxing. Probably because he um, uh, grew up in it. You know, that's the world that he grew up in. So it's sort of like it's always going to have a place in his heart, I guess. And maybe, like, it's weird for Dana, isn't it? Like, he built his own sport, essentially, and just wants to help boxing be better. And they keep, like, making an enemy of Dana White. It must be very odd for him. That was sick. Sick. All right, lads. If you love me and you're enjoying this stream, do me a favor. Don't fucking go anywhere. Because last time I did this, everyone left the room. <laughs> so I, before the next fight, I'm going to quickly take a very quick piss and grab a beer and come and sit back down. I'm going to be gone for just 30 seconds. Stay on this stream and hang out with me. And let's finish this card together strong. Oh my God, I'm out. So do go fuck you, man. <laughs> All right, 30 seconds. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Foster's Lager, mate. VB. Right back. Here we go. One piss, grabbing a beer. Done.
I'm back. It's gonna be. He's deaf, getting bitten by a rescue toilet spider. <laughs> We did find a spider in the toilet the other day. It was fucking horrifying. All right, guys, let's leave. You guys suck. <laughs> Bro's taking a piss while a lizard watches him through the window. <laughs> Nathan Jones, he's always watching. I got Israel at a sign here in the bathroom. Just where is it? Witty, it's witty time. <laughs> I should install. Like a little speaker over at my brother's place by his toilet, and every time he lifts the toilet seat up, it should be Israel Adesanya's voice going, "It's Willy time." <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Nice, mate. Good on him. He earned that win. Shabazian in his corner. Good on him, man. Sick. Flavor Flav in the UFC Apex. Apparently, it's like $5,000 a seat to be at the UFC Apex. Apparently, it's fucking crazy ticket prices. <laughs> Public enemy. Goat. Mate, oh shit. Look at that. Look at that. Who we got for the next fight? Who we got for the next fight? Justin Tuffer coming off. He's literally just coming off an injury. And he is a fat Tongan bloke going against Carl Williams. How do we feel? Mate, crazy knockouts. Look at this shot right on the chin. Right on the chin from Cameron Simon. How did he take that, man? The fucking South Africans are built different, boys. I'm telling you. Michael Chiesa goes, Peyton Talbot, he's got that it, it factor. He's got an all the right paces to make a superstar when you put them together. We'll see how he goes with the MMA community in those painted nails, yeah? Hard to get on board the MMA community and paint your nails. Israel Adesanya has learned that the hard way. Not with that monotone personality, he won't. And the fact that the UFC don't really build stars. That's such a weird statement, man. Like, the only difference between the UFC and PFL is that the UFC do build stars. Like, that's what the UFC do. They're in the star building business. Three weeks away, UFC 300, Pereira Hill. To me, the most exciting fight that I'm looking forward to the most is that changing of the guard fight, right? Charles Oliveira, Armin Sarukian. That's that fight where it's like we're on a cusp here. Here's what it looks like on paper. Both of these ladies undefeated through their UFC runs. Thus 
my woman and I'm going to be that dude's ass. Kurt, I was going to say that I don't like cheaters. And so, uh, and I don't know how you guys feel about this whole um, uh, situation, but I don't like cheaters. And so I wanted to call out Leah Thomas. I wanted to encourage her to trans or encourage him to transition from women's uh, swimming into women's MMA. And then I'll transition in to become a woman and I'm going to be that dude's ass. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to say, because it's all, it's all about it's all about getting the you know getting you know a little bit of shock value. But um, oh, I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Like you just said it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. Just comes out and says it. <laughs> oh shit! Wow, Sam Elby has been moved over to um, Karate Combat. Who knew, huh? Smiling Sam. The Australian Grand Prix is going on in Melbourne today. I had no idea. That's how little I follow F1. Yeah, Volk is a goat, brother. Volk is an absolute goat. I've never been to the F1. Yeah, I think go. I think Volk is done, Az. I think I do think he's done, man. I think he rushed it too quick against Ilya, and it doesn't matter even if he takes a year off against Ilya. It's sort of his time has come. It sucks, you know. It sucks, but it is what. It, I mean, we all get old. We all age. What are you gonna do? You can't. Can't fight the clock. Where did I put it? <laughs> Where did I just put my beer? What the hell? Oh, there. <clears throat> oh, no. 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 Mason, what's going on? Oh, fan of Harry Webb. Don't know who that is. What beer is this? Just a regular lager, lager from Aldi. Ribbit. Harry Webb. Let me see if I get the face. When am I coming to America? Later this year or next year. Um, yeah, got to go see my girlfriend's family again. So we're going to go back over there. Harry Webb, the human highlight reel. And is it a pussy 4%? Yeah, it is. It's just a regular strength. <laughs> yeah, it's just a regular strength there, there. Rivet from Aldi. It's just a nice little lager, mate. Harry Webb. Best fighter in Australia right now. 11 and 0. Where is he fighting? He's fighting in Hex. Right, right, right. Okay, so we've got two leagues here in Australia. We have got Hex and we've got Eternal. Hex, I've got to buy a $55 uh, Dazen, I think it is, Dazen, um, to watch Hex, and I'm not going to do that. So I, I follow Eternal a lot more than I follow Hex. But interesting, interesting. Just had a brutal KO of it, Hex. Regular is 5%, yeah. Yeah, you guys have fine beers. I had a great time when I was over there last year on the piss. Australia has good food and beer. We have great, man. We have great food and beer. Everywhere, in every corner in Australia, there seems to be a fucking local brewery going on. Harry Webb. Nice. I'm going to add that to my Instagram. We'll check him out. Nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> you should go to Hawaii. Me and Jamie were just looking at a cruise that went for 17 days, leaves from Brisbane, Australia, goes to Hawaii. So we were thinking it would be sick if next year we could do a cruise and then fly from Hawaii over to Boston to go and visit her family. Cody Hudson is another guy from Australia that's really good. Is he? Hawaii is the better version of Florida, maybe. Is Cody in Hex or is he in Eternal?
Carney Haddon. Eternal. Nice. I'll keep an eye out for him. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, yes, yes. I recognize him. Yes. No, he's in Hex. Oh, shit, man. I can't watch these Hex fights. Unless you know a good link to watch these Hex fights on. He's in Hex. Yeah. I'm not spending $55 a month to watch, to watch Hex X, see? <laughs> Hardy Webb is from Ballarat. Have you been there? I've been there plenty of times, man. Yeah, plenty of times. Ballarat's nice, man. Our jail the city of gold back in the day. You used to be able to find like gold nuggets just lying on the ground in Ballarat. That's the only reason that city exists. Fun fact. Bet you didn't know that. Let's watch this guy get his face cut off with a sword. Hawaii is beautiful. Fun fact. They hate that they are part of the USA. They should be fucking blessed that they're part of the USA. Otherwise, their dollar would be worth fucking nothing. So people should not forget what a fucking privilege it is to be in a Western country. Caden, Katie Hayden is so strong that he picked his opponent apart like a pillow. Sick, man. I'll watch him on YouTube. Hopefully Hex YouTube channel will have some highlights. So you have to pay for Hex, but not Eternal. So Eternal is on Fight Pass. So I can watch Eternal like I can watch Cage Warriors as just part of my Fight Pass. And Fight Pass is only... $10 a month or $14 a month, something like that. But Hex is with Darzen. I think last time I tried to buy a Hex card, it took me to Darzen.com. But anyway, it's pay-per-views. Like you, it is pay-per-views. You have to get it. So I don't bother following it. And it's not big enough to pirate like one championship is. Watch Cody Heyman versus Jarrett Wimbleham. Cody picked him up. Okay, I'm going to save that and chase that up in... um. My YouTube later. Yeah. Dazone. Thank you. Dazen. Dazone. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> Face it, it's true. Like, I, I'm, I don't even fucking pay for pay per views, mate. All right, Justin. Don't let the Kiwis down. Don't let us down, mate. Don't let the Anzac spirit down. Yeah, man. I ain't paying for pay per views. Fuck all that. There is no way that this is a real image of Tyson Fury. <laughs> I refuse to believe that this is a real image of Tyson Fury. Jarrett Wil uh, Wilbraham, yes, is a crazy guy from the Gold Coast. He lives in his van. That's a great idea. Living in your van is a sick idea. Trains with Volk. Yes, I have heard of Colby Thickness. I think he fought at the last Eternal card. I'm pretty sure he fought at the last Eternal card. Um, yeah, that team is fucking sick. Really sick. Uh, yeah. Oh, what are we doing? We're, we're starting this fight. We've got a walkout coming on. What's happening on this screen? Come on, Dougie. Justin Tupper just walked out. William Knight, fuck me. Oh, Thug Rose, fuck you. Australian regional scene might be the best in the world. Tougher from Brisbane. Yeah, but he's a Kiwi, mate. He's a Kiwi. Um, I mean, that and Cage Warriors, they're fucking sick. They're great, great scenes for MMA. Great places to start. So, yeah, Eternal is a high level of competition. Australia versus America in MMA, who wins? I think it's, uh, honestly, I'm like not praising the Americans because it's an American audience. I think it's like a 50-50. The Americans are far better at wrestling, got a far better wrestling um, base, but Australians have a way better kickboxing base. So they could come off. It depends on, it all depends on the sprawls and the scrambles when it's Australians versus Americans. America has the best athletes in the world. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. You look at our population, right? Like Australians have only got uh, 25 million people in the entire country. And we were essentially all of UFC International Fight Week last year. Whenever you look at the Olympics, the Australians are always in the top five, top 10. They're always there. But America has like 350 million people. And you guys have like, how many champions? Oh, you got a few champions at the moment. Yeah, Americans are all right. If there was NFL money in the UFC, there would be all American champs. Again, maybe. A lot of fights come down to who just wants to win. And oftentimes money can make you soft. And fighters need to be hungry, hungry people. 
Tailor the tapes on the screen. We'll get into the fight soon. Most fights end on the ground. True. That is true. That is true. Australians are tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Australians are they're, they're tough dudes, for sure. But yeah, I think it all just depends. U USA puts a lot of money into MMA. It does. It does. It does. But, you know, the Brazilians, the Dagestanis, you know, you see, like, the Georgians, these people that are coming out of cultures where, like, it's win the fight or go back to the favela, go back to Thailand and being, you know, living in a house that doesn't have proper air conditioning. You know, a family doesn't have two or three cars. Like being a hungry fighter when you're locked in the cage matters a lot. You know, that's the argument that's coming up with Conor McGregor. Like, is he just too rich to give a fuck anymore? You know? So yeah, it depends. I mean, America has a great skill level because it can afford to have the best training in the world. But sometimes it's just about the dog and the guy. You know, all right, the fight's going to be starting, mate. Let's bloody get it. Let's bloody get Rose Namajunas off our fucking screen, mate. Fucking Rose Namajunas, mate. Fuck it. Fuck Rose Namajunas, mate. Fuck it, bro. <clears throat> it's all about training. I played hockey in Canada. I'm 49 now. We had the best coaches, but now that the USA is doing that, it's about coaching and population. I think in some sports like hockey or basketball, it is certainly about the coaching and the facilities and what sort of team that you can put up fight has started Williams versus tougher. But I do think that's what makes cage fighting unique because your coaches can't fight the fight for you and there's no team to fall back on. It does come back to the, the fighter and how much they want it. Oh man, Knight just lands nicely on Tuffer's chin there, doesn't he? Fucking fat heavyweights. They don't knock each other out in this round. We're in for a cuddle fest and then women's MMA and that will be our entire night. Two fat guys hugging each other and then WMMA if this fight doesn't end in this first round right now. If William Knight doesn't knock out Tuffer, who was just injured a week ago. Oh, nice one, Just. You yeah, bro. Come on, bro. Sleep in, bro. Fuck. William Knight takes Justin Tuffer to the ground. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh well. It was fun while it lasted, wasn't it, guys? Taking down all four of his UFC and Dana White contender series opponents. There are so many Maoris in my area that I live in. So many of them. I went to high school with all these lads. Come on, bro. Let's go. Get up, tough. You can do it, mate. He's fucking beached underneath him. He's beached as. Oh, strong elbows from William. Oof, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that. Come on, tough. Come on, mate. Get that fat ass up against the cage. Dig your ass into the cage and stand up. That's it, sick. Look at that from Tuffer, from such a big bloke. Oh, but William just works him back down into the canvas. Tuffer's actually got some scrambling. William can be um, kneeing the thighs here if he wants, cause some pain. Come on, Tuff, don't give up, mate. Don't give up. He's starting to lose the energy for the scrambling, isn't he? As Williams just, yeah, I know, Sudoku. I know. <sighs> Fuck it, tougher. Grab the cage, man. You'll get one warning. You'll get away with the first one. Fuck, grab the cage and spin yourself out. Reminds me of Ty. Can't fight off the ground. Yeah, South Pacific fighters. They're not that well rounded. God bless Mark Hunt. Thank you, Mark Hunt, for having a real fucking go of it. Jesus Christ. Williams is ragdolling tougher. Just throwing him around the cage. Fat fighters. I know, mate. Are all finished in the UFC. Unfortunately, as long as a fucking heavyweight division exists, 
you're going to have fat fighters. They should honestly be like, you're not allowed to fight in heavyweight if we can't see your top two abs. If, you, if your top two abs are hidden under a layer of seal fat, you should be forced to cut weight and go to light heavyweight. Where true heavyweights like Aspinall and Garn and Pavlovich can stay at heavy, heavyweight. Oh, now he's just holding him in guard. That's so bad. That sucks. BKFC Australia reality series hosted by Dougie so I can talk shit but not get hurt. <laughs> I'm down for it, AZ. I'm down for it. Oh my God, he's handling tougher. Mason, what's up, bro? Yo, what's up with you? Oof, nice little hammer fists. Hurting tough. Herb Dean's going to let it play. So Herb Dean does not know when to end a fight. And he should let it play. It's not fight ending yet. Just boring. Just boring. And they want to get paid more. They think they should be paid like NFL players. Can you believe that? What a joke. <clears throat> Rate the UFC Atlantic City main card out of 10. Aaron Branchfield and Fiora is the main event. Why not just make Vicente Luque and Joaquin Buckley the main event? Why? Why? Why not Chris Weidman as the co-main event so he can retire as the co-main event? Why do we do this? They do not deserve more pay. At least heavyweight doesn't. <laughs> what is this fucking hugging? Yeah, I agree, mate. They want more pay to fucking hug each other. It's disgusting. Imagine if we worked some sort of pay structure, right? Where they paid you per significant strike or something like that. Or like a flat fee for knockouts. Like what if there was like a 100 grand flat fee for knockouts? Or like it staggered as you went up in the rankings. So like everyone below level 20 in the rankings gets 100 grand for a knockout and everyone between 20 and 15 gets 200 grand and everyone from level 15 up, like ranking 15 up, gets 250 grand per knockout. Why does a lower organization like PFL or Bellator pay more? They do not. They pay their um, champions more and they will pay their like some athletes and some stars more. But a PFL or a Bellator fighter on the prelims is not earning more than a UFC fighter. But they like to, like PFL like to have their championship at the end of the year where they give their champion a million dollars and then say they pay better than the UFC. Do they? Fighters deserve more like NFL deserves guaranteed pay. Do they? They deserve to get paid for as much as they fight. Do they deserve to get paid more per fight? Is it? 18 years old, 22 years old. 22 years old, you can be in the UFC. You can leave the UFC at 34, 35. So what's that, 15, that's 10 years, over 10 years. If you enter the UFC at 20, 21, and leave the UFC at 36, nearly 15 years. And why? And the NFL, the teams pay the players. The teams organize the arenas. The teams pay the players. And if you're assigned to an NFL team, you have to live in that city and you have to go to training a certain time every day. You have to play the schedule that they give you. In the UFC, if you're a fighter, you choose where to live, you choose where to train, you choose how often to fight. It's just different. It's uh, a lot more freedom, you know. You get paid in US dollars, you can go train in Thailand and live a much more comfortable lifetime. If you choose to get paid in US dollars and you choose to live in, I don't know, California, where it's expensive to live.
PFL is bought out by the Arabs now. Yes, it is, Marvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Saudis are pumping money into it. NFL, the NFL sport has contracts with marketing. Please elaborate, AZ. NFL players can live wherever they want, but not during the season. If a, someone is signed up to play for, what is it, the rate, the, um, Whatever, whatever team, like let's say the Las Vegas team. I think that's the Raiders, right? The Las Vegas Raiders, I'm not sure. But let's say like you're contracted to play for Las Vegas. Don't you have to go to team practice and team training at their facilities every single day? So wouldn't you have to live in Las Vegas? Like don't players move to the cities that sign them all the time? They pick up their families and move there because they spend the majority of the year there. So I don't I, like they can live wherever they want in the off season, but for the majority of the year, they've got to live around their their city. No, that's not true. So if you're signed to play for Las Vegas and the whole team is training in Las Vegas, the team training is in Las Vegas on Monday, and you live in Florida. What do you do for training? You train by yourself in Florida and meet the rest of the team in Las Vegas on Sunday. You spend the entire season living in a hotel or an Airbnb in Las Vegas, and then at the end of the season, you move back to you move back to your city where you live. Is that what you're saying? It's not semantics. It's not semantics at all. But see, it's, but the NFL is such a money-making sport, they should pay more. They use VR headsets. That's not how it actually works. Moment of silence for Simon. Yes, yes, Simon got the fucking shit beaten out of him. Is NFL more dangerous than the UFC? I think so. I think it is. I think they're constantly getting more head trauma than UFC athletes. I think UFC athletes like sort of t uh, carry each other in sparring and play with each other in sparring and don't try and hurt each other. <clears throat> Where they're constantly getting crash tackled in NFL and their brains are getting messed up. Yeah, I would say NFL is more dangerous. Yeah. Do we all hate WWE in here? I am indifferent to WWE. Yeah, the high-speed collisions fucked them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Imagine getting more head trauma than UFC, UFC guys. Well, that should be illegal. Should it? Are we not free people? If you want to strap yourself into a plastic Iron Man suit and crash into another guy for other people's entertainment, Shouldn't you be allowed to do that? Isn't that what true freedom is? Former WWE fan, but I'm too grown to be watching that stuff. Yeah, that, uh, Muhammad, I'm with you there, brother. Oh my God, this whole fucking fight has been going on. We are not watching it because it's so boring. <laughs> Boxing has more head trauma than MMA. Yes, it does. Yes. WWE stopped for you as soon as you found MMA. That's fair. Yeah, I used to watch M um, WWE as a kid. Used to love it as a kid. But yeah, I just got go out of it. Bro, it's not a fight. <laughs> I know, mate. I fucking know. It's embarrassing, isn't it? They're scrapping a bit now, but this fucking William Knight just keeps wrestle fucking tougher. It's fucking annoying, man. It's, and I, oh, we said it, right, at the start of the fight. If they do not knock each other out, it's going to be 15 minutes of fat heavyweights hugging each other. And that's what it's turned into. The problem with boxing is you have to take so much damage to get good.
Yes. The problem with boxing is you have to take so much head damage to get to good. That is true. Because it, like in MMA, there's so many things coming at you. Plus the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. It's, you know, you're not collecting all those knockouts in your MMA career like you're collecting in a boxing career. And essentially, NFL is just fucking head trauma. That's like, it is just guys smashing each other in the head. Like NFL is way, way more damaging long-term than MMA, I think, I feel. My gut is telling me. Fuck this fight, man. If this was one championship, he could knee tougher in the head right here. He could fucking knee him in the head and end him. Boxing is the opposite. They give you 20 cherry fights to build you up. Boxing is just corrupt. Yeah, it sucks. They ruined it by not allowing people to lose. In MMA, you're allowed to lose and slowly get better. What UFC fighter has taken the most damage? Probably Tony Ferguson. Dan Hooker has taken a lot. Dan Hooker has taken a shitload. Muhammad, Tony Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. One championship is phenomenal. I hope one becomes more popular. It's so good. Peace be upon him, the one and only, the GOAT, Tony Ferguson. Do I find boxing to be, number one, hard to follow? Because there's so many different organizations, but they're all intertwined, like whenever they try and unify the different belts. So it becomes too hard to follow. And then also, like, it can be a very boring fight. You know, if they're not engaging and it's just the hands, it can be very... I know we're watching, like, two fat heavyweights fucking hug each other, but boxing can be very boring. But also, MMA can be very boring when this happens. Just this nothingness. Edson Barboza gave Dan so much damage. Dan has copped a lot of fucking damage. And his speech has slowly started declining throughout his career. Tony flipped, didn't he? Tony Ferguson has also given a lot of damage to people. Tony flipped. Tony went from giving damage to receiving damage. It's like Tony Ferguson is a human MMA yin-yang symbol. Kevin Holland has taken a bunch. Yeah, but not to the same level as uh, Dan Hooker or Tony Ferguson, has he? He has taken a lot. The owner of one championship, uh, Shatari Shikamura or something. Yeah, is awesome on camera. He is, man. He's fucking awesome. Tougher, grab the cage, mate. Who cares? Cheat. Cheat. Fuck it. Favorite fighter of Bass Rutan. I love Bass Rutan, man. This man tried to kill you. Now it's time to return the favor. <laughs> fucking Bass Rutan. This man tried to kill me. Now I must return the favor. Oh, shit. Mason, you know what? What, Mason? Tell me. Holloway has taken the most damage. Holloway has taken a phenomenal amount of damage. A phenomenal. But at least Holloway's there to give it back. In Tony Ferguson's last seven fights, all he has done is had the living fuck beaten out of him. That's all Tony's done for the last seven fights. At least Holloway is there and back. You know what I'm saying, Mace? At least it's like a bit of play between the two. The slap, in general as a move, is underrated. It gives you more distance and doesn't break any knuckles. And also, if you just slap another man before, rather than having a street fight with him, like if he says something to your woman and you just walk up to him and just slap him, it's so much more degrading. <laughs> Like, there's something so bad about being slapped, you know? It's such a degrading move. Fuck these two. Oh, good. Now we get to look forward to Rose Nami Yunus. Oh. oh, fuck this. Fuck this. I should have stayed in the forest. I was under a waterfall. I was underneath a waterfall. It was lovely. Oh, shit. Tony Ferguson, even in his wins, takes an insane amount of damage. That's true, because he's, he's winning from the bottom, isn't he? So he's got to like out elbow and out work from the bottom position. That's true. Tony's probably lost enough blood to save 1,000 lives. <laughs> true. <laughs> Let's stop the clock. Oh, shit. That's funny. Justin Tuffer is finished. Yeah, mate. They're fucking just gatekeepers, fucking heavyweights. Fuck them. I'm over these fights. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're done, mate. They're done. Do you know Aussie Man? I know of the YouTube channel Aussie Man where he reviews things. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm finished with these dead ass fights. I know, but we're here, aren't we? And we're hanging and we're streaming and we're talking shit. And it's 25 more minutes and then we can all fuck off and do something interesting. <laughs> How else can we put it, boys? What else can we say? That was UFC Vegas 89. <laughs> These guys just want to make love. Oh, yeah. I know. It sucks, mate. It sucks. And that's UFC Vegas 89, and that was UFC Vegas 88, and that's fucking Atlantic City, and this is all because of UFC 300. This is all UFC 300's fault. If UFC 300 is not the best card that we've ever watched together, it's fucking ruined an entire month and a half of MMA. Any UFC fighter than young Misha Tate besides Brock. AZ, I don't know what you're talking about. You asked me, do you know Aussie man? And then you went, any UFC fighter besides Misha Tate. I don't know what you mean by that, those two. <clears throat> oh, hotter. Yeah. God, yeah. Um, what was the one that was uh, dating Ortega? Uh, Cortez. Cortez. Way hotter than young Misha Tate. Misha Tate's nose was very thickly set. Um, you can tell Tuffer is pissed. I mean, I get it, because Tuffer was there to swing and bang. And he was just getting pinned down for 15 minutes. So... Too much makeup? Well, that's just a matter of taste, isn't it? You know? It's what do you like? You know, but what was that blonde girl that fought today? She was quite pretty. On the prelims, the Russian one. I was calling her Russian Lagathar in the car. I think Misha Tate just gets remembered because she's a she's an old school goat. You know what I mean? Like when women's MMA first came over to the UFC, Misha Tate was one of the standouts. So us... Us UFC fans have a place in our heart for old Misha Tate, young Misha Tate. The coast of New Zealand has such strong winds that these trees have grown in one direction. That's fucking crazy. You want to call this out? Stipe Miocic, charity cook ever. Is that what he's saying? I wasn't listening to him. Is that what he was saying? Let me rewind. He's working, learning how to barbecue. So this summer, let's do a charity cook-off. And uh, if he's not busy, you know, he's yeah. important man. But if you got some time, my, your... Sweet. I like that. That's funny, man. That's funny. <laughs> That's cool. You should come to Florida. I will one day. I absolutely will. We're going to be in our van. We're going to drive around America, do a tour, see all the national parks. It's 100% going to happen. Me and Jamie are going to rent a van and... Go around America. Hang with some of the gators. We'll go gator hunting, gator fishing. Yeah, boy. Fuck that. What the fuck was that fucking call out? Ah, oh, just, just kind of, he was just having fun with it, isn't he? What's a better card than UFC 300? None. UFC 300 is, a, is an amazing card. The best card they've ever put together. Anthony Smith on paper. On paper, it's the best card they've ever put together. Um, it's just, it sucked all the talent out of this month. It sucked all the talent out of the UFC. So it just, it better live up to the expectations. Like it can't just be good just on paper, you know? It was very random. Yeah, it was very random, but it was, it's, again, it gave us something to talk about after that fucking snooze fest of a fight. At least it gave us something. You know what I mean? Have I ever eaten Gator? No. The weirdest thing I've ever eaten was lamb's brain. A, a, a lamb's. When I was in India, I, I ordered a lamb's brain soup. And it was just this bowl of soup with lamb's brain floating in it. That's the weirdest thing I've ever eaten. <clears throat> Shout out for him doing charity on paper. Have you ever eaten Gator? It's funny when an Aussie does an American accent. I probably butcher the American accent. You think two ninety? You think two ninety nine was better on paper than um, three hundred? Really? Oh, so Anthony Smith is going to lose that fight. He's going to he's going to lose that fight. Ever had duck? I love duck. Absolutely love duck. 
And Jamie gets so angry at me when I eat duck because she loves ducks, the animal. She's not vegan, but she just loves ducks. She thinks they're really cute. And every time we go to a Chinese restaurant, I always want to eat the duck. <laughs> Is it true they eat poo in India? I don't think it's true, but I do think they, I'm pretty sure it's true that they mix some sewage water with cooking oils to thicken it out. So in a way, they might cook in poo in India. Yeah, there's a traditional Turkish dish you ate in London called a pasya. Okay. Lamb's brain soup. Right. Yeah. Fucking craziness. A bear is actually tasty. <laughs> a bear is actually tasty. Okay. And a license to hunt is 35 bucks. Dude, how much meat could you get out of a bear? If you killed a bear, took it to a butcher, got it cut into steaks and sausages and put it in a deep freezer, you could eat for like six months off one bear. That's fucking, that's awesome, man. That's so cheap. 300 is the best card ever. It is on paper. If it lives up to it, this will all have been worth it. But 300 has sucked dry. Look at the fight nights we're getting. Look at this fucking card. Look at last week's card. UFC 300 has taken all of the talent that's available. UFC 300 is like the Adderall of UFC cards. They've just taken all their energy and put it on one card. And if it doesn't live up to the expectation, it's fucked up nearly two months of MMA. Duck is greasy. Yeah, it's good in Chinese food. The Chinese really know how to cook duck. Don't bath in the... Don't bath in the Gangas. I don't know what we're talking about. Ah, isn't Rose's trainer her man? Yes, they met when Rose was 16 years old or something. So let that sink in. Australia has the best beef in the world. That is true. It's called Angus beef. I just had a Macca's burger with Angus beef in it. Anyway, I don't know if you can see it, but that is like some of the highest quality beef in the world. Yeah, we got beef imported from it. Yeah, it's called Angus beef. It's not, like the Japanese pay thousands of dollars for this beef. And it's damn good, man. It's damn good. That's what the rumors say. Some bear meat is blue. Ooh, damn, dude. Cool. The 300 headliner is the worst. It's not the worst. It's a normal card headliner. It's a regular headliner. It's not a 300 headliner, you know, but it's just a normal card headliner. Great fights before the header. Absolutely, mate. Argentina has the best. The best meat? Is that what you're saying? Argentina has the best beef? Alberta has good Angus. Oh, really? Nice. Maybe they just import it from Australia because it's like exotic. You know what I mean? Like they like, like over here in Australia, your Chevys are like exotic cars because they're imported from America. But to you, they're just like regular fucking cars. You know what I mean? I had Australian Wagyu. Yeah, that's like the fat crispy beef that is damn nice oh rose all right let's do this huh she's repenting all right she's doing it she's repeating i'm the best i'm the best she's not oh my fucking god oh jesus christ i'm the best it was her mantra while she was winning and defending her straw weight belt which she did two different times once against the soon-to-be hall of famer joanna yajacek I'm getting secondhand embarrassment. I'm getting secondhand. Rose is so stupid. I'm getting secondhand embarrassment. To be part of the most boring fight in UFC history and then to come out just saying, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. Yes, Pat Barry waited until she was 18. I know. I know. It's horrifying, isn't it? Imagine sending your daughter to karate lessons and the fucking coach waits until she turns 18. <sighs> Disgusting world we live in. Disgusting people. Disgusting. Disgusting boys. Disgusting. And then to come out and not throw a single punch and to say, I'm the best. Disgusting behavior. <laughs> AZ, you're fucked. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you are so fucked. <laughs> She's 11 and 16 repeating, I'm the best. <laughs> I know, mate. I know. All right. I'm going to get a top up. Don't go anywhere, please. Come on, guys. We've had a good time. We've done this card together. Let's not bail now on each other. All right. Let's get through this together now. I'm just going to the fridge and back. Okay. I'm not bothered to watch these dishwashers fight. <laughs> Sudoku, you can go if you want to, man. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I get it. I'm going to have another beer to help me get through this shit. And then whoever's here, we'll watch it together. <laughs> Sudoku, I'm staying, but I had to turn them off. It hurt too much. Update me if anything cool happens. We will, mate. We'll be here. You'll know. You'll hear us screaming if anything happens. But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be holding my fucking breath for 25 minutes, mate. You know, if you want to open up another window, play some uh, Call of Duty mobile, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you because this is dog shit. This is absolute dog shit. Let's see if we can find some funny based shit on Twitter. Also, while we're here, while we're hanging out, even if you're just lurking, because I can see there's like sometimes eight people in chat, sometimes eight people in the stream, sometimes five people in the stream. If you're just hanging out and just lurking, I'm on Discord. I got the stream in the corner. We're chilling. Nice, man. Nice, man. Enjoy. Hang. Talk shit. Feel free to banter. I'm going to say this real quick before the fight starts. <clears throat> if you're just hanging out and you're enjoying this stream, putting a thumbs up underneath, just liking it, liking this stream or liking any video from any YouTube creator that you enjoy watching really helps them. YouTube is entirely in business to sell ads. And when people are watching something and they click the like button, it tells YouTube that that audience is willing to engage in things. So just by hitting like, you're helping the creator be like you're helping the creator tell youtube that that creator is cultivating an audience that actually interacts with them so anytime you watch anything from anyone just click like it helps so much <clears throat> i love how this is the main event and nobody is watching it i know <laughs> we're literally like is there fucking anything else on twitter is it look at this monkey this will be cool this will be more interesting <laughs> Like, is there anything else more interesting than this happening right now? Oh, fuck it, hell. The nerve of them. The nerve of them giving Rose Namajunas another main event after what she did. Honestly, the UFC hate us. Dude, he went and got the bite tattooed. I got fucking bit, bitches. He got it tattooed to him. <laughs> what a goat. This kid is going down as one of my favorite fighters. What a move. <laughs> yeah, in there on the fleshy...
How are we going? Did I hit my microphone and turn it off? I might have. That's okay. I've got another microphone here that I can plug in. If this one's running out of battery, that's okay. I'll keep an eye on the mic. Yeah. AZ, I was saying, as the microphone died, I'm going to watch the microphone thing to make sure it doesn't go. If it does, I'll switch over to the manual microphone. Um, she looks like an underfed... She looks underfed, mate. And she always looks like she's about to cry. Like, she's looking at the camera like, I'm the best. I'm the best. It's too much. <laughs> that dude with the Brazilian... Hello. Hello. Okay. Nice. Nice. There we go. Done. Sorry. Like I said, it might die. Let me know how this one goes. We're in. I, like I said, I got a manual microphone. Hopefully it sounds good. I've never actually tried this one yet. So let's see how it goes. All right. So if that's dead. Um, that guy that was in the stands, I was saying... <clears throat> That guy that was in the stands that had the Brazilian flag and um, Rebes's face all over his T-shirt, he is part of We Want Picks, which is a phenomenal YouTube channel for when it comes to actually doing breakdowns of MMA and of the UFC. They do such good work, such detailed pick work and analysis. Whereas what I do here is obviously just like have fun, be a fan of the sport, talk shit, you know, like my channel is literally like a fan's experience of MMA. Their channel is some of the most like unbiased and in-depth analysis you could watch. We want picks. And he's such a Ribas fan that he paid to go there and watch it. So that's what the, that was the story of that dude. Nice, 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 beautiful. All right, we're here. Mike's back on. Mike's back on. Let's see what happens. Let's enjoy this fight. Twenty, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one. All right, we're in. We're in. We're off. We're running. Let's go. At least Rose is striking now, huh? At least we've got some striking going, which is a nice change. Oh, Rose with the overhand. Hello. Stung her a little bit. Interesting. All right, Rose is on top. What is she going to do with it? Corner, live stream, 
just testing the mic on my end. Oh yeah, nice. That's good. Just testing the mic on my end. Nice, good. Wrestling on the ground. Don't we love it? Muhammad, aren't you the one that watched that has this anti cupping theory? Fighters that are cupping never win. Rose's got these cupping things all over her back. Twenty seconds. That's the rumor. <laughs> I saw it online. It must be true. <laughs> Done. Round one. Rose number Yunus. Actually threw some strikes. Why is Ribos holding her hands up like that? I mean, I did. I'm not going to lie. I missed the start of the round getting my audio f issues fixed. So from what I saw is Rose. Let's see what Twitter thinks. Rose, round one. Oh, Small Soldiers. Dude, I remember this. I remember this movie. I loved it. And I had the Small Soldiers video game on PlayStation 1. Goated game, mate. Goated. Round one, Rose. Why are her hands up? She was surrendering the round. What the fuck? <laughs> yep, yep. One round rose, round one rose. Yeah, okay, I'm not crazy. On oh, that massive two and a half hour UFC iceberg. Mate, I loved that. That was such good work. So good for new fans as well to just plug into that and just pick up where like we are as a UFC fan base. 48, 47, 46, 45, bang. Yeah, he's made two, hasn't he? I don't know. I kind of like this microphone out here in the open. doesn't feel like I need to worry about what's happening on my chest so much, but it could be because I took my headphones off. Yeah, yeah. And also, I find myself, like, um, watching the iceberg and then going back and watching the old fights as well. Like, I have a big habit of that, of, like, going back and watching old shit. Like, I'm re-watching old seasons of television. A rival organization should show a video of this fight. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> and gain what? <laughs> That's just me. You love Mike Ferry. Oh, dude, BKFC is so fun to watch. It's just brutal. Nice spinning kick from Rivers. There is a bit of a scrap going on. Come on, let's not, you know, let's appreciate it when it's actually a scrap. Dude, Mike Perry was born for bare knuckle. Not real, like not exciting, but not dog shit. It's between dog shit and exciting. We're at good, right? This is dog shit. This is exciting, and we're at it's fine. A Z, how do we feel about um, Darren Till not wanting to fight? Mike Perry in BK. He will box him, but he will not fight him in BK.
Well timed takedown from Rose. Really well timed. The till quit on UFC. I know, man. I know. But now he's looking for a boxing fight with Mike Perry. And Mike Perry said, anytime. Come over to Bare Knuckle. And Darren Till said that he was um, too pretty for Bare Knuckle. Literally, he said he's too pretty for Bare Knuckle. He doesn't want to get hurt. Rose is out. Interesting little ankle lock that was going to happen, but Rose handled it well. And Rose just fucking implements the grappling, slams her down. God, what an annoying fighter Rose is. Like, when she wants to be the best, when she wants to switch it on, she really can, can't she? She really does have a lot of talent when she chooses to use it. This is sort of going back to what we were talking about before with the teams, like NFL versus UFC. When you're having a bad day, there's no one else on the team to pick you up. It's just you. So every time Rose has looked shit, it's just her. There's no one else to help her. But every time she looks brilliant, she looks brilliant. Till doesn't have that strong mentality that's needed for combat sports. When he was winning, he was fine. Absolutely, man. When he was winning, all good. I remember when he was winning, he was talking about how he was going to be the best combat athlete of all time. He was talking so much shit. Like, he knew that he was the greatest fighter ever. He was just waiting for it to happen. But now that he's on a horrible losing streak, he doesn't know how to dig deep into that darkness. It's because she said, I'm the best. It's mind over matter, Doug. What are you, dumb? <laughs> Doug, she said, I'm the best. So she's the best. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what a fuck it. This is why, Mohammed, I don't know how you bet on MMA, bro. How do you fucking know what's going to happen, mate? It's what makes it so interesting. And that's another round to Rose. God, it would be good if it was only three rounds, though, wouldn't it? Like, it doesn't need to be 25 minutes. Does it, boys? Takedown's working for Rose. 2 0 Rose. Ribas is doing her thing, looking sharp and confident. Ribas is landing the better strikes. 2018. One and one going into the third. I think so. Bro, I regret it. I regret it. But I bet in small amounts, and my goal usually is to snowball with it. So I keep reinvesting my winnings game by game. You're a grown man, Muhammad. I assume, I assume you're over 18. You spend your money however you want, man. You spend it however you want. And if one day you're ahead of the game... You had a good day. Look at this, man. He got his fucking bite mark tattooed to him. What a goat. And Dana White goes, now I'm giving him 50K. This is awesome. He got the 50K because he got the tattoo. And Dana's like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm 27. It's calm, I make decent, I work in fun. Yeah, man, then have your fun, bro. Have your fun. Enjoy it. And there's no better rush than gambling on MMA because it is so fucking random. Anything can happen. So enjoy yourself, dude. Plus, you don't drink either, do you? You need some. You need some release. Boom, we're off. <clears throat> Doug Rose. Don't drink, don't smoke. Mate, a little bit of MMA gambling, no worries. A little bit of cocaine, no worries, mate. I know what you do. You don't drink, you don't smoke. Ketamine. Oh, sits Rose down. Oh, good body kick from Rose. Solid kick. Nice inside left from Rose. 
Nice overhand right from Rose. Man, Rose's striking is sharp, man. Real sharp. That was a good leg kick from Ribas. Jolted Rose's knee. Ribas's kick just hits Rose's elbow, doesn't land clean. I feel like we're knockout hunting, yeah? Like, has anyone else got that energy that comes right before a knockout? Where they're both just picking their shots, looking at each other? Someone's going to swing in the wrong direction. Someone's going to land perfectly. I feel like we're right in that knockout territory. Not with a fucking takedown like that, Rivas. What was that? Oh, that uppercut from Ribas was nice. Rose felt that immediately pulled back out. Great exchanges from the two of them picking their shots. Ribas goes for a takedown, gets it, needed it. Has to do damage with it. Rose has been winning this round so far off the damage. Rose gets right back up. Reverses it. Goes for her own takedown. Hibas rolls. They both scramble. They're both back on the feet. Nice. Really nice. The way Rose used Ribas's weight and her momentum just threw her over herself. Ribas gets a good trip, ends up on top. Has to do damage. Has to do damage. Takedowns are not worth anything when there's been damage. AZ, great channel. Glad I found it. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm going to go run one out and then head out after this. <laughs> thanks, dude. I'm happy you had a good day, man. Thanks for joining us. You're a fucking funny cunt. So, Duga, it's been 15 minutes. It's a main event. It's not over yet. <laughs> AZ, if you want notifications for when I go live, grab the Discord link because uh, YouTube cannot be trusted. And sometimes when you turn on notifications in YouTube, they just fucking notify you about everything. Just everything. All right, now Ribas is doing some ground and pound. Is it enough to steal the round? So, Duka would say, who cares? But she has turned it around. Rose was winning a lot of the significant strikes. Was it enough damage? Who knows? Round over. <laughs> Satuka, just here. Just off the savagery. Gives no fucks. <laughs> Guru says, 2-1, Pat Barry's victim. Pat Barry's victim lost that round to Rivas. According to Guru, that was enough damage. These guys, MMA fighting, do you think he's a Rivas fan? This is We Want Picks, one of the best analysts in the game. <laughs> Just an absolute fucking flog. <laughs> I'm not sure, but he's definitely single. <laughs> oh, shit. What a simp. <laughs> it is simp energy, isn't it? We want picks. They're global now. Oh, shit. That's funny. Bang. 
waste, mate. 900 year old Crusader's sword found off the northern Israel coasts in 2001. Based Crusaders freeing the Holy Land. Four minutes, four minutes, 30, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, let's go, boom. Look at the screen, Doug. Oh, shit, she catches Rose when Rose is stepping in. It can be a very closely scored fight, can't it? Is the tide starting to turn? Hebus, 30 27. Great round for Amanda. I can't believe Rose isn't even ranked. Is it because she's moved back to the weight class? AZ, hey you still here, man? Do you wonder if uh, the stories about Sanko are true? Maybe. I mean, you never know what happens in an officer's closed doors, do you? There's always fucking weird stories from work parties, isn't there? There's always someone in the office fucking someone else. But then also, like, MMA is incredibly, incredibly incel. Incredibly incel. So any woman in MMA is going to be fighting an upstream battle. Like, do you guys remember the fucking oil up Dana White? Oil him up, oil him up, oil him up. The whole internet was saying oil up Dana White for, like, three months. Yeah. And then the second, the second Nina drama gets in on the joke, all of MMA just stops laughing at it. <laughs> it's so harsh. <laughs> it's so harsh, man. There was this joke going around on MMA Twitter as Dana was slowly releasing all the um, media for UFC 300. And every time he announced a fight, people would be like, it's not good enough, oil him up, oil him up. And every time he did a live stream, all they would type in the comments was oil him up, oil him up, oil him up. And then eventually Dana went, next week I'm going to announce the UFC main event. And Nina Drama did an Instagram story where she was like, if Dana doesn't, announce it next week we're going to oil him up and she walked into his office with a bottle of oil and held it up in front of him and the joke just died in the ass straight away <laughs> all because nina got in on the joke <laughs> it just killed it flat like it's such like a close-knit boys club which is like i mean it's the most masculine sport in the world it makes sense So, yeah, when it comes to Laura Sanko, you've got, like, there's always someone in the office that's like that. Always someone in the office that's like that. But also, it's just, it's, it's uh, like, an incredibly masculine sport. Muhammad, let's be honest here. Be honest. You think it was the fact that she did it in a cheesy way that ruined the joke, not that she was a woman? Maybe. Could have been. It's hard to tell the vibe of the masses, isn't it? Could have been. I mean, it was very fucking cheesy.
Just imagine it. She comes into the office. Oh, shit. I'm imagining it. I'm picturing it. Cheeky smile with oil in her hands. It was such a low effort joke she made. True. Like, if she had just hidden behind his chair, like, put her phone in the fucking corner of the office somewhere, left it on live stream, hidden behind his office chair, and then when he came into the room, jumped up behind him and just squirted him with a bottle of oil and screamed, release the fucking UFC 300 main event. Release the main event! Release the main event, Dana! If she had just done that, that would have been like a goated MMA Twitter moment. That that would have done more marketing for UFC 300 than everything else. Everything else that they've done, if she had just done that. And Dana would have fucking thanked her for making UFC 300 and oil him up and go viral. Dabba, Dana. Dana would have slapped her. <laughs> Yeah, but it would have been worth it. <laughs> would have been funnier. Yeah, so you reckon it was the delivery? Maybe, maybe. Dana would have pulled a John Jones. Oh my God. How John Jones gets away with it is fucking insane to me. Mason, what's up, brother? We're still here. We're still, we're still ticking away. I should be paid to watch these cards. <laughs> I know, mate. UFC 300, sucking the life out of everything around it. Dana actually fought his wife. <laughs> I mean, he slapped her. It, you know, it was hardly a fight. It was a slap. I swear it was in the news. It was in the news. Yeah, it was. But John Jones beat the living shit out of his wife. John Jones didn't just slap his wife. John Jones beat the living shit out of his wife. The fucking cops were called. There was blood everywhere. Mason is going to go smoke a blunt, chill at the beach. Good, man. Enjoy. It's Saturday night. I do think... Do I think 300 will live up to the hype? I, I hope so. I think it will. I mean, they're, they're, they're meant to be... How can you put Gaethje and Holloway in the cage and it not be fun? I think it'll live up to the hype. Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. That's going to be fun. Oliveira, Sarukian, that's going to be fine. I think it will. I don't think you can put them together. Yuri Prohaska is, is a nutcase, an absolute nutcase. That'll be fun. We'll be right. I think it'll live up to the hype. Dana slapped the dog shit out of it. He did, mate. He did. John Jones had to find a way to get that back. <laughs> oh, man. John Jones is a goat, so they give him a pass. Maybe. Maybe. And it's 1 a.m. Go to the beach, bro. Watch the watch the sun come up. Yeah, nice, man. Good way to chill the mind out. Figgy will absolutely fucking chin Cody. He will sleep him. Cody is the last chin. Cody is going to start dancing around, acting like acting like he's the goat, shadow boxing no one, doing dance moves, and he's going to step in, and Figgy's going to time him perfectly and put his fucking fist through the back of Cody's head. Cody's going to be lying on the cage, unconscious in a world of pain. <laughs> Volk will get chinned by arm and next victim. Don't say that. Don't say that. Probably. <laughs> 300, it's a great card. It's just the headliner seems off. It does. It seems like we needed a gimmick fight, a fun fight, a unique fight. Connor versus Diaz 3, something like that. GSP versus Islam Makashev. Islam versus Leon Edwards. We needed something, something, something tasty for UFC 300, you know? What's my plan for today? Beach, maybe. It's a nice, lovely day. I, I, we stayed up very late last night drinking at the campsite, so I might just hang out, play some Call of Duty and relax the mind before work tomorrow, back at work, you know? I might, I'm going to have to think of a video to make for tomorrow morning. Because I am not fucking making a video about this. <laughs> so I'm probably just going to zone out, play Call of Duty and think of a video. We were river swimming all weekend, so 
I don't feel the need to jump in the beach. Cody can look great or amateur. Cody looked great. And ever since then, what was his last fight? His last fight, he was fighting an absolute can and doing that old school Cody Garbrandt thing where he was dancing around just being a fuckwit. Like, and he was fighting a can. He was barely engaging. The guy was barely engaging with him. And Cody was like acting like it was the Dominic Cruz fight all over again. Fucking embarrassing, man. <clears throat> Volk will get chinned by Charles after Armin smashes him. Charles versus Volk at 155. That would be sick. That would be sick. I don't even know who's winning this fight, and I don't care. I'm half watching. Yes. <laughs> yes. The weather is nice in Melbourne. It's lovely out there. It's lovely and sunny. Beautiful. Saduka, watch Roadhouse tonight. I might watch Roadhouse after this, man. If it's on the pirate sites, I will watch it tonight. If, if I can chase down an a international copy, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll chuck on COD and watch it in the background and just hang out there. Armin is going to KO Charles with elbows on the ground. Armin is going to beat Islam too. Wow, Mason, you are loving Armin right now. You're a big Armin fan. Um, let me think about that. Armin is going to KO Charles. Armin is going to KO Charles. Maybe not. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think he will. I don't think Armin's going to beat Islam as well. I don't think Armin's going to get to Islam, to be honest. I think Charles is going to win. Yeah. But hey, we're going to watch 300. We're going to find out together, mate. Connor sucks donkey dick at acting. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> I mean, Connor wasn't really acting, was he? Connor was um, just being a cokehead in a bar. So if he, if Connor cannot be a cokehead in a bar, then he has no chance at Hollywood, <laughs> right? Oh, shit. It's on Prime Video for free if you have that. I don't have that, but I'll find... I got links, bro. I got links. I'll find it. Volk can't move up. His uh, lack thereof of reach leaves him exposed. Yeah, AZ, I think you're right, man. I think Volk is um, hes going to be a gatekeeper for the up-and-comers. That's where Volk is now, and he'd be lucky not to get finished more savagely. That's just what you think? That's fair enough, man. Roadhouse was actually good. I'll watch it today. If I can find a link, I'll watch it, and I'll get back to you guys. Armin will take him down and drop the Yol Alvarez elbows. Maybe... Maybe while he's dropping the elbows, Oliveira will put his feet on the hips and then transition to his feet up over the arms and then put him in an arm bar, a triangle, and uh, and finish him that way. Oliveira's submissions are very sneaky. That's what always keeps him on the ground. Rose one, good for her. Plus, Charles has a cut already. Armin can slice that open. We were talking about that the other day, weren't we? He might cut that. That fight might get stopped due to the cut over the eye. Yeah. Connor was just being Connor. <laughs> Rose one, Saduka, Rose one. And I shut it off immediately. <laughs> Mate, I cannot make a video about this tomorrow. What can I make a video about? I'll think of something. It'll come to me. Whatever. It ain't going to be about this. That's fucking true. It's not going to be about. UFC Vegas 89. <sighs> Good night. See you in the next fight. See you at the next fight, AZ. Have a good have a good weekend. Have a good smoke. Make a video about the state of fat heavyweights in the UFC. Could do. They absolutely need to be trashed. Could do. That'd be a fun one to do for a Monday morning. Just shit on UFC heavyweight. That could work. They do absolutely deserve it.
Damn, Doug is Rose One. Oh, I was looking at Twitter. <laughs> Sorry, I zoned out with the Twitter. There's some crazy shit going on in Ukraine. <laughs> I don't think I didn't pick Rose, did I? I picked against her. Oh well, she's back. Good on her. She, we will be having way more Rose Nami Yunus main events. Rose Nami Yunus and Holly Home main events forever. For a thousand years, Rose Nami Yunus and Holly Home main events at the Apex. Rivas was very tough. Was very tough. Yeah. Uh, she did all right. Just listening to her talk. No excuses, but here's an excuse. Zhang or Yan Zhao Nan? I'm going to go Zhang. Zhang still got that dog in her. Sandhagen or Uma? Ooh. Sandhagen. I don't think Umar's got that. Sandhagen. I like Sandhagen for that fight. I think he's got enough. Rivers Barber was a fun fight. Rivers Barber was a fun fight. That's true. All right, Rose Davies is done. All right, that's it. That was UFC. Umar is tough as fuck. I know he is. I know he is. I know. That's why I hesitate. You know? I know. But also, there's... You know, I think San Hagen is just that little bit more, you know? He's got a little bit more dog in him. I, I just, that's, yeah, that's where I'm at with Uma. He is tough, but he always finds himself in trouble, you know? Uma. Uma and Uma. Look at the fucking Dagestan. Send me a location. Let's go. International fight week. Who does he want? I bet this will always be Dagestani riders, mate. Islam versus Poya and Corey versus Umar in June for international fight week. That's the vibe. That's the vibe that they're suggesting. I like it. We need that. I need that. We need that. I need that. We need that. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Absolutely nice. Cody versus Umar. Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Has that been announced? Is that a, is that is that announced? Or are we just speculating? Like that poster is too good to be a real UFC poster. They don't usually make posters that good. You know? Send location. Round two. I, st I still think Sanhagen's got it. I'm not going to lie. What has Sanhagen said? And then it came back around and you said no this time. Explain to me the thought process of why you didn't take it this time. Well, it wasn't necessarily a no as much as it was like a, hey, give me some time to think about it because it does feel like I would maybe be a little slighted in that situation only because I felt like I was now one fight ahead of Titanum, you know? Like if you're paired up to fight someone, one guy pulls out and then you win your fight you're kind of ahead, in my opinion, right? So um, that was kind of that, but when I talked to the UFC initially and they brought that up, I was pretty much like, hey, like, just give me a little time to, like, think and sit with that one because if that's what you guys are telling me is going to be for the title next, then absolutely. But if that's not going to be the situation, then, you know, like, the rankings matter a little bit, you know? Or Sanhagen. Why is it so hard for Sanhagen to get a title fight? Seriously, does he not deserve it? And I was thinking about this the other day, right? Sanhagen beats TJ Dillashaw, you know? So he's beaten Miles Marias, Miles Marias, Miles Marias, yeah, Frankie Edgar. He beat TJ Dillashaw, lost to Pure Yarn, but, you know, all right, fine. Beat Sonya Dong, beat Marlon Vera, has beaten Rob Font. Like, Corey Sanhagen absolutely deserves a title shot. Absolutely deserves a title shot. Maybe not more than Marab de Vilashvili, but absolutely deserves a title shot. <sighs> poor Sanhagen. My poor boy, Sanhagen. I had a misfits go. Did it finish? Good on him. Look at this motherfucker. Jesus Christ in heaven. He fucked his neck up. Oh my God, that hurts. 
Oh god, that's disgusting. All right, let's put this over here. Let's put this over here. We'll chill out for a little bit. Have a bit of an unwind session. How long have we been going live for? Current viewers, two viewers, current viewers, three. We've been live for three hours and 40 minutes. So we probably are going to wrap this one up, boys. It's been very good to be back. It was a hell of a weekend. Junior Dos Santos thinks that Tom Aspinall is the real champion and wants the UFC to strip John Jones of his heavy wealth belt if he doesn't fight. Tom Aspinall. That is 100% fair. I don't understand why we are giving John Jones this kind of leeway to just fight whoever the fuck he wants. Has to be a title defense twice a year to hold the belt with the injury of 12 months or more before he's made. With an injury of 12 months made before to relinquish the title. The short career spans in MMA, you need to be offering top contenders regular chances to win the belt. Absolutely. The Santos is right. Jones himself should have done this. That is so true. Like, didn't Yuri Pahaska give up his own belt? because he was injured and he couldn't defend it. Like, wasn't that the whole thing that went down? But we know that John Jones is not a man of honor because we know what he does. We know what he does in his prior life, and that is not exactly what a top-tier man would do. What the hell is going on in here? What the hell is that? I, I've watched this seven times and I still have no idea what is happening. What is happening? Whatever it is, it doesn't look real. Yeah, man. The internet is just CGI now. Careful on Twitter, by the way. There's lots of messed up stuff today about a terror attack. Yeah, that's Twitter, though, isn't it? And that's Twitter. You never know what you're going to get. That's why I've got to be quick with the scrolls, mate. Be sure to scroll hella quick. I know. i got to split, like, go right over it. Nick Diaz versus Kevin Holland in UFC 5. Mate, Nick Diaz is the last performance in the UFC was embarrassing. I'm a big Diaz fan, but shit. Yeah, that would be that terrorist stuff, I reckon. We'll be quick. <laughs> I see what you mean, Mo. I just scrolled past some. I see exactly what you mean, mate. It could be a spicy day on Twitter. I get exactly what you're saying. So this is the view, right, from the couches at the UFC Apex. This guy, Jacob, is the one that I was talking about. He is one half of We Want Picks on YouTube. And he's the one that spent a couple of grand to get a couch seat 
at the UFC Apex just so he could watch rib us. And this is what you're seeing. This is what you're seeing when you spend like two grand or something on couch seats at the UFC Apex to watch the fights. That is not bad. To be able to have the Apex to yourself, if it was a good fight night card, you know, not the one that we just had, but if it was a good fight night card, that would make for a hell. That You reckon that's a crappy view? What if they were right there? They were standing. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Yeah. What if they were right there in the corner? To be honest, you'd want to be at a higher angle to be able to see the entire ring. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like when we watch the Apex and there's some people sitting in those weird stands, if you were just a little bit higher. True, but you could hear every single punch and kick from that side of the ring. You could hear literally everything from there. Plus, you've also got the TV screen, just a slightly higher angle. Yeah, maybe if they had like the $2,000 couch seats, because it's the apex, like no matter where you're sitting, you're going to be nice and close. So maybe if they had like the $2,000 couch dining experience, like just a little bit higher behind the people that sit in the tiers, that might be a little bit better for sure. Can I wait? 300 is almost here. Yeah, 300 is on the way. I cooked my 65-year-old husband a nice steak dinner before his 10-hour shift at Taco Bell. That is a frozen meal, man. That's a frozen meal. God damn. Ah, oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a troll video. Mate, you're all over Twitter, Mo. You're all over it. You're like, seen it? I know. <laughs> Mate, what has been going on over in Twitter, over in Ukraine? Everything that is popping up. I see what you mean. It's going to be quick scrolls today. For what it's worse, Rose Namajunas was credited with zero significant ground strikes in the first two rounds, per the official stats. It's over now. Nobody cares. That was a UFC co-main event, by the way. I know. It's so true. Still don't know what to think about Rose Namajunas at 125 pounds. She looks considerably slower, nowhere near as sharp as at 155. I mean, she looked sharp. She looked good, not nearly as sharp, but the fact that she was still engaging and even throwing strikes, I think is something to be, you know, to be impressed by because she looked fucking horrible at the last round of fights at 125. Ah, uh, 115. <clears throat> Russia had a terrorist attack. More than 40 dead and 100 injured. Well, if Russia have just suffered a terrorist attack, they uh, it's going to be a wild night for the Ukrainians. A fucking wild night. Dumb tweet alert. Lorisenko is ruining the fights by talking so much. Leave the commentary to people that have actually fought. A female UFC fighter should have that job. She's just annoying and it's obvious she's trying so hard and doesn't know what she is talking about. I think Laura Sanko, more than 40 dead and 100 injured. God damn. Can't lie, it's brutal. The terrorists actually recorded themselves doing it. Fucking hell, mate. And the video is getting posted online. What a crazy ass world we're living in where terror attacks are getting posted online to be put up on Twitter and YouTube. Jesus Christ. This Laura Sanko tweet. Laura does a great job on the desk. Sometimes she's one of the best commentators there, to be honest. She knows her shit. She's not Michael Bisping that is constantly just saying, when I was a fighter. Like, she knows what is going on with the sport. It's fucking odd to see so much Laura Sanko hate going on. This Chinese restaurant 
simulates riding in a train full full windows. They're fucking building anything out there. Here's the thing. Okay. The thing is, they were all messaged by a strange person on Telegram who offered them money to do it and then provided the weapons. It's ISIS. Claimed it was ISIS. Okay. You don't want to get into it? Fair enough. Fair enough. It is mostly an MMA stream. <laughs> it is mostly an MMA stream. Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, th like, as always, one of the things that happens, well, that's not a good way. I don't mind. No, it's fine, man. Whatever. One of the things, like, to keep in mind when this shit goes down is that it, there is so much misinformation. I don't want to kill the vibe, but I do want to drop some knowledge. Oh, good, dude. Like, I'll catch up on the news tonight and tomorrow morning. I'll catch up on the news. But... And again, like I've literally just gotten out of the car and come back from the forest. Like I was out in the forest camping not too long ago. One of the things to keep in mind is that when one of these big global events do happen and shit starts coming out online, there is so much global misinformation warfare going on from all sides, from all sides. And they're all in a war with each other to control the narrative as quickly as possible, as fast as possible. So it's almost it's almost impossible to know what the truth is straight away as things start to evolve and as as events are occurring because every single side is going to be trying to put out their narrative and then somewhere in the middle of that there's the truth. One interesting thing I will say is that somehow the US embassy warns US citizens 24 hours on their website to stay away from crowded websites while in Russia. Very interesting. But they could have picked up something over Telegram. They could have picked up some internet chatter. We'll see how stuff evolves. People think it was Mossad and the USA. Again, early days, you never know. You never know what is going on. And you never know what the truth is going to be. Because, again, there is a narrative that always tries to get pushed really quickly. Some people want to say ISIS. Some people want to say the USA. Some people want to say Muslims. Yeah, man. Early days. Early days. We'll know. We'll know. Best thing to do is just wait to see what the mainstream media says, and then we'll know where not to look. <laughs> like, you'll, know, you'll know exactly where the bullshit is. Just wait for the mainstream media to come up with something and be like, all right, so it wasn't that. That's what they want us to think it was. And then you can start to really pick apart the details. <clears throat> of course they are. <laughs> of course they are. I'm I'm shocked. <laughs> we shall see. Early days. Early days. This this one? Cheddarhead! Oh my god, bro. The Cheddarhead in chat. Guru's main man. How are you, son? Bro is wearing a crop top. What are you talking about? Oh, this one. Jesus, yeah. What is in the water from the 135ers? It's a fruity division, mate. <sighs> yeah, that's a real fucking... What is that? Rocky 3. It's that real Rocky 3 vibe. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Same man who wore the pink nail polish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely getting pegged. I don't think it's a phase. You know, when you see photos like this, you're like, it's not a phase. The nail polish might have been a phase. I don't think this is a phase. I think he's he's deep. <laughs> Why did I come in here and see this as the first thing? <laughs> Cage, Cheddarhead, we don't control what Twitter shows us, mate. All right? We just sit here and react to Twitter. Sinsane, what's going on, mate? How are you? But I think the details are out about what we can expect to see from this kid from the future. He's going to be part of that Sean O'Malley, Ian Gary, <laughs> Gordon Levitt. He's going to be part of it. 
JJ, musical bore me here, lads. Oh, am, I, am I being bloody raided by MMA musical? Good on him, mate. He's a good kid. Fruitcakes everywhere. <laughs> Insanity. I mean, it might be the best base for MMA. Unfortunately. This is meant to be the sport of kings, but who knows? Musical MMA raid. Musical. Musical. What a goat. Cheddarhead, thank you guys. Cheers. Oh, mate, you guys are legends. Did we bloody see this? He's gone ahead and fucking gotten it tattooed to him. He got the fucking bite mark tattooed to him in Vegas. That is the most fucking Chad move in the world. Musical, thanks for the raid, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Melina has proved to the contrary. Maybe. Musical is here. Musical in The MMA musical himself. Blame Cheddar Head for the raid. All right, I'll blame Cheddar Head. Cheddar, thanks for the raid. Musical MMA, thank Western Mass Climber. He's the fucking best mod in the land. He is, mate. He is. Rose Namajunas fight tech. Why doesn't she keep the long hair and dump Pat Barrett? Okay? Why not? <clears throat> Reed Cage. All right, Cage. Western Mass Climber raid. Legend. Read musical, all right, musical. Western Mass Climber mod, he is. Don't forget to bloody fucking like and sub, guys. I'm here all the time, having a go, making a chat of it. MMA Joey versus the MMA Guru in a five round fight. How does that fight go and who wins? Obviously, MMA Guru is in the cage waiting for the MMA Joey to make his way down into the arena. MMA Guru is shadow boxing, the only combination that he knows that Cameron Simon showed him. MMA Joey's music starts playing. It's Celine Dion, and he has a heart attack walking to the cage. <laughs> Rose hasn't had long hair in 10 years. I know, but is that not better to look at, you know, than a shaved boy's head? Yeah, can't lie. Like and sub. Good on you, man. Dougie deserves it. Talbot was fucking brutal earlier musical. He was, man. It was a great fight. But unfortunately, unfortunately for us young Talbot fans... <clears throat> Work rate is up. Absolutely. She had a rational thought eroded from her from over a decade. You can't judge her at this point. That is true. Pat Barry didn't wait until she turned 18. Actually lulled. Oh, good, man. <laughs> I'm happy you enjoyed that. What is this? this? Look, we're all talking about how this guy could be the next Tony Ferguson. He's got that fluidity in his striking style, but unfortunately he comes from that Gordon Levitt base of MMA. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a level of MMA here. I think Joey vs. Guru should actually be on a UFC opener card for hardcore fans. Maybe UFC 400. We could, if Joey lives that long, we could see him make it, you know? If he really, like, gets his diet sorted out. Maybe you'll see 400. <laughs> Thoughts on them? You know, you can't you can't mention it, can you? Which is telling, isn't it? Let's see how the news plays out about what goes on in Russia tomorrow, and we'll know. <clears throat> also, lads, Dougie's Corner made a Discord today. Join the gang. True, it's in the description. He has the link. Lo, if Joy lives, that one fucking love it. <laughs> oh, shit, poor Joey. He'll be right. He'll get through it. The dude's funny. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. I like it. All right, let's press on with MMA Twitter. Jesus Christ! Skip over that. I really got to work on cleaning up my Twitter if I'm actually going to have people watching this. King Terzi, subscribe. Thanks, man. Cheddar, be nice. It's your raid. Cheddar's all right, man. We can handle it. Let's listen to this. Dana White gave him 50 grand for, that, for doing this. How fucking cool is that? Nice, man. Nice. Who the fuck bites someone in an MMA fight? Who the fuck bites someone in an MMA fight? It's an MMA fight, dude. All right? Jesus, man. Guru isn't that less fat than Joey. He didn't eat for two weeks leading up to South Africa. Technically gave him 25k for it. He got bit for 25k, which is wild. Mate, I'll fucking cop a bite on the arm for 25k. I don't mind. Guru is back to 300 pounds right now. I mean, look, they're both fat cunts. 
Yeah? Like, let's not fucking pretend that they're not fat cunts. They're both fat cunts. But at least Guru has proven that he has the ability to cut down four or five, right? Bro was feeling a bit peckish mid-flight. But, you know, Guru can put his head to, to the task and at least cut down. Who would sucker punch someone on a running track? Who would, indeed? Bro was feeling peckish mid-fight, wanted to get his fucking protein in. UFC legend. <clears throat> yeah, not easy, mate. Not easy. UFC was beyond petty for even trying to book this fight. What the actual fuck? Yeah, but there was a conspiracy there, wasn't there? The guy was getting fouled blatantly, saw the ref doing nothing, and then took his matters into his own mouth. Took matters into his own mouth. So you think he was like, fuck it. If we're going to allow cage grabs and kicking people in the dick, if this is the UFC and you're allowed to cheat, I'm just going to fucking bite this cunt maybe <laughs> maybe i was i was in traffic driving home from camping i was out camping this morning and i didn't have the sound on all i could see was what was going on i saw them break the fight up and i was like that's that's a very strange position to stop the fight not until i finally came home and sat down did i realize what the hell was going on to that cry's credit lima cheated the entire fight grabbed the fence five times and struck his spine yeah so i guess he was saying you know what Fuck it, let's just bite him. <laughs> Great minds, yeah. You guys are you guys are thinking alike. I mean, it's the UFC. You're allowed to cheat. Why not? This is a this is from the MMA Guru. This is a congratulatory message for all MMA fans worldwide. Congratulations, you made it through another UFC Fight Night card. I know it's getting tougher to sit through every shit week, but don't worry, guys. We can make it. It's so fucking true. Yeah, he was getting hammer fisted in the back of the head by a guy who was only able to be in that position by holding the cage in front of the ref. Then why didn't the ref do something, you know? But true. There were moments, though, during the fight night when it was, uh, when Tuffer was fighting. You know, and he was just getting wrestle fucked by a fat heavyweight. And I was thinking, like, just just fucking cheat, man. Like, you're allowed to get away with one cage grab. Just get up and cheat. I think it was the same ref, Muhammad. I think it was... No, I don't know if it was Chris Tony. Let's go back and look. Let's bloody check, mate. Disqualification from biting down here in the prelims. It wasn't Herb. It was the fat, bald guy. <laughs> Tafa should have been DQ'd in the first round. He he kicked Watsy's face. He kicked Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did see that. And he even apologized for it straight away. He was like, oh, what the fuck? Uh. By the way, how many Americans are here in chat? Chris Tyone, that's what I was thinking. Chris Tyone was the ref. By the way, how many new Americans have come over from the MMA Guru Raid? Uh, from MMA Musicals Raid? Because I got something to show you guys that I know you think is just a rumor, but it is 100% true. In Australia, you with, you with, you with. In Australia, they call McDonald's Maccas. It's actually called Maccas in Australia. And there it is on the box. And on the side of the building, it's called Maccas as well. A what? A rim job? Who's talking about rim jobs? Who's giving a rim job? You you giving out rim jobs, Bob? Charge, charge for that, mate. Don't ever give out a free rim job, all right? Make sure you charge for it. Mother and daughter fight at grandma's house. That's fucking horrible, mate. Who the fuck does that at their nan's house? Jesus Christ. Fuck 
Bobo, let me get one. Let me get a rim up. I said rim job? I didn't say rim job. Did I? Maybe. Rim job. <clears throat> okay, um, Adam Fujit is going to fight Josh Quinlan at a UFC event on the 15th of June. Nice. Finally, a good fucking fight. Who do we like for that one straight away? I kind of like Josh Quinlan for that. I'm not going to lie. Adam Fujit stays getting tough matchups. Mm, fucking junior varsity matchup again. Why is it always the people that I like? I like the matchup for Quinlan, but I'm not sold in his recovery time. He did get hurt last month. Cage, Gatsy here, you fucking sped. You guys are unhinged. And I know it must be like fucking 1 a.m. over there in the States. So I'm just here hanging out with a bunch of pissheads. Western Mass is the mod. If Mate, Western Mass spends every single day scrolling the live tab on YouTube. And the second that he sees someone with under 10 subscribers, fucking bang. He's in there and he's asking, can I be a mod? Can I be a mod? And he just hounds them. Gets them to change everything about the stream. <laughs> uh... Thoughts on Adam Greentree? Let me put a name to the face. Thoughts on Adam Greentree? Is this the hunter that goes on Rogue in a bunch? No, I don't want to sign in. Um, I have no thoughts on Adam Greentree. I mean, if he hunts food, if he hunts his own food, that's quite based. I don't remember Fujit's fights, which usually isn't a good sign. I mean, those, like, prelim fighters, they're hard to remember, aren't they? Quinlan for me? Quinlan for me, mate. Quinlan for me. No clue what Getsy means. Yeah, neither. I don't know what get G-T-S-Y. That must be some weird American slang. Chad is in charge of half of YouTube. It's insane. He's going to become the new Susan. YouTube should be fucking giving him a salary. He should be getting a cut out of all of our super chats that he mods for. It is. It is a solid strategy since Saint. He can pretty much call the fucking shots wherever he goes. Western Mass is at the point where he's asking certain channels <laughs> to unmod. It's just too much work, mate. It's too much work. Putin's not going to be happy. Putin's not going to be fucking happy. The importance of wearing a hard hat at work. Jesus Christ. Based. Don't be silly. Always go for the gilly. Oh, phenomenal knee. Unfortunately, cannot show it. We are from Australia. They are from Australia. That's why we have Maccas, Australian beer coasters, and why we cry whenever Volkanovski says that he's ready to step in on a day's notice. It's um, it's horrible being an Australian MMA fan. Jack Jenkins was the next big up-and-comer from Australia, and he fucking broke his arm. Um, JDM, the next big up-and-comer from Australia, the only cunt that wants to call out Shavkat Rachmanov. It's it's not easy, mate. Israel Adesanya thinks he's Australian. It's, you know, it's just... It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. Uh, Melbourne. Melbourne. Cage, it's good to see you. GSTY, Godspeed. Don't know who that is. Good on her. Uh, yeah, down in Melbourne, man. Down in Melbourne. Beautiful part of the world. It's 4, 4.45 in the afternoon right now. It's lovely. Best way to be an MMA fan. Do you know Chessbra? I've heard the name. I've heard the name. Let's have a look. Chessbra. Oh, Ziz's brother. Yes, mate. I don't know him personally, but they are from my era of when I used to go out clubbing. They are from my era. Fucking Ziz, bro. 
Stay sick, cunts. You too can be a sick cunt. Go to the gym, get chicks. You too can be a sick cunt. Yeah, mate. We love chess, bro. We love Zids. He lives on. I've only just realized what that means, and I'm going to drown myself now. The press conference has started. The aesthetics crew. Yeah, mate. That is exactly when I started, when I was just a young lad. Just first getting my first fake ID and started going out. That's when they were around. When I figure out what that means, I'm going to cry, aren't I? I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to type it into my phone because I don't want it to come up onto my screen. And I know the internet. And I, I know your your group, Western Mass and Cheddar Head. I know your group. you bloody troublemakers for streamers. Apparently all it means is good to see you. Apparently that's all it means. Good to see you. So if that's all it means and you guys are just trolling me, then that's all right. That's okay. I don't mind being trolled, but quite frankly, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little bloody nervous when you lot show up because fucking anything could happen. Dougie's just talking shit. All right. I'm, I'm trolling Twitter. I'm scrolling through Twitter right now. While the biggest trolls on the internet are in my channel and there is a fucking war going on in Russia, okay? I am so on edge right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Should I listen quietly to um, what the fuck is going on? Hello. Should I listen quietly to what the fuck is going on at the press conference? Could anything, could anything interesting be coming out of the press conference of UFC Vegas 89? The answer is almost certainly no. UFC fighters making their debut on the prelims. Fucking UFC Vegas 89 was pretty much the Contender Series episode two. Cage, no. Yeah, I don't think so, mate. I'm not going to bother with that shit. I would much rather just sit here and hang with you guys till you get sick of me talking shit. What are we doing? Fucking cokeheads. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They will rematch one day for a belt. Okay, was anyone in Guru's stream today? And how much was Guru in tears when Cameron Simon got the shit kicked out of him? You know, like Cameron Simon gave Guru his audience, introduced him to the MMA stage. I'm kidding, by the way. But obviously Guru must feel a certain way, like a certain loyalty to Simon. So he must have been fucking upset when that went down. Shall I ban the cokeheads? No, let them play, mate. You know, they... they, they he was so bitter. Yeah, I bet he was, man. I bet he was. You shattered him. Yeah, man. Imagine how you must feel, right? As like, I mean, Guru, the level of MMA fan that he is, is he slept in his fucking shed with a sleeping bag on the floor for years. And finally, an MMA fighter reaches down and picks him up and says, come on, you can be one of the boys. Come and hang out with us. And then next, the next moment, you're watching that same fighter get the absolute shit kicked out of him by someone who wears crop tops. <laughs> you, know? you know how it feels. Benil Dariush is your cousin. Benil Dariush is a good man. It sucks to see it, you know? Now everyone's just calling out Benil Dariush. He's the new gatekeeper for lightweight. It sucks to see. Fucking Benoit St. Denis is calling out Benil Dariush. The nerve of him. Peyton Talbot is winning now, man. Yeah, Peyton Talbot's on top now. He's getting so many viewers. It's going to launch him because he's he was pretty much the the only interesting thing that happened on this card, yeah, Mo? Like, he was really the one interesting thing that happened. Simon kisses men. That is true. I was like, what? Does he? And then I was like, oh, yeah, they're South African. They do. Mo feels bad for Benil. Benil is going to be the one that everyone at Lightweight wants to just pick at on the way down. The way you see it, it was a lose-lose fight. I mean, you must have enjoyed it then, Cage. You must have sat back and been like, fuck yeah. Someone's going to get the fuck beaten out of them. And no matter who wins, Cage wins. <laughs> Chito Vera is reacting to Corey Sanhagen's criticism of his loss. You look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Chito Vera needs to thank God. 
that he hit Sean O'Malley's perennial nerve because he is never getting another shot at a UFC title ever again. That was it. That was it. Oh my God, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> See ya. I hope she can do one pull up. I hope she can do one single pull up. <laughs> no, no, she can't. Oh well. What the fuck is burning CDs? I was there 3,000 years ago before Spotify. In the dark times. Back when you had to use Windscribe and Lime City to get music. <clears throat> Mods, ban Cheddarhead for being Iranian. Do not ban Cheddarhead. Cheddarhead is one of the goats like musical Western Mass. One of the goats. LimeWire, the dark arts, mate. I remember those days, right? Like I'm 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 30 something years old now. I'm so old I don't remember which part of 30 I am, mate. I'm 36 or 35 or something like that, mate. So I get it. I get those days. These fucking Gen Zs have no idea how hard it was to get music, you know? No idea. B Decker, what's good, brother? Mate, I'm just kicking it after UFC. Dog shit, UFC 80, 80, 89 it was horrible, wasn't it? So we're just hanging out. And my good friends over at Channel of Musical, Western Mass Climb, have decided to raid me. So we're just scrolling through Twitter and checking it out. And Cheddarhead's Twitter is 50% porn and murder. Well, Cheddarhead, I get it. But, you know, I've decided that this Twitter is going to be online on YouTube live streams. So you got to clean it up, mate. But with what's going on in Russia today, my fucking finger is flicking my scroll button like a bean. I'm flicking the shit out of it to try and get past some of the things that are popping up on my screen right now. <laughs> like, why am I live streaming during a war? <laughs> so dumb. Back in the day when you used to have to give your computer aids just to get a CD of 10 or 20 songs. So fucking true, mate. And LimeWire would just be installing all sorts of shit onto your computer. Goodness, you nearly fossilized. <laughs> We're quite old over here, mate. We're quite old. Remember VH1 pop-up video? I do. I, I do. There were some tapes that I had, some videos that I had with certain sections of them. I've had to re-watch so many times. <laughs> there were certain sections of them I had to re-watch so many times. They eroded and you couldn't watch them anymore. I'll let you guess what movies they were. Imagine if war was on pay-per-view and more orchestrated for TV. That's kind of fucked up. Like an orchestrated war for TV. I don't think that could happen. Shedhead, that could be better than a main card tonight. I mean, it, to be honest, right, Shedhead, it pretty much is for free, yeah? Like what you see on Twitter of the war is kind of fucking crazy, yeah? Like especially when it starts and it kicks off and you start to get all that raw footage it's kind of nuts. Is there a chance that the UFC can give Max Holloway floral shorts for UFC 300? Yeah, but I want commentary and replays. I mean, that's what pretty much BitChute is, yeah? Cheddarhead? Like... Better angles. If you follow some channels on BitChute or on Odyssey, you'll find what you're looking for, mate. I know you will. Remember VH1? Where are they now? Where, where, where is that show now? Cheddarhead, they're called pundits. <laughs> <laughs> is versus pal prediction? I mean, it's so hard to call. There's so many variables, mate. And Twitter report us. <laughs> Palestine is going to get KO'd. The refs are... Now, Mohammed, this is the one. The refs are looking away.
There's a familiar face in Muhammad Usman's corner. I am not sad that I missed this fight. Like, I saw it. I saw it on my dashboard when I was driving home. But, Jesus. But it looked so good parlay piece. I mean, imagine if you could actually gamble on it. A war. If you could actually gamble on it. Now, that would, that would be something. As well as just going on BitChute and Odyssey and seeing what was happening. Fucking Muhammad Usman needs to be cut from the UFC. That was such a god-awful performance of just a plot along, do-nothing performance. It was fucking horrible. You can gamble on politics. I mean, that's all war is. War is just money and politics. I mean, all wars are financial wars, aren't they? <clears throat> How long until you get monetized? Okay, do you actually can? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will get monetized once I hit 1,000 subs, Weston, and I'll hit 1,000 subs whenever I hit 1,000 subs. We'll get there. You know, every day we keep chipping away at it. There really is no rush, man. Like, it's all good. It's not like I'm going to stop watching UFC tomorrow. You bet 500 on Trump in 2020? Bloody rigged, mate. Bloody rigged, I say. I'll put down my cash. And the next thing you know, middle of the night, everything just fucking changes on you. Fucking bullshit. How long until you shut up, Weston? Listen, Cage, you fuck, all right? You fucking listen here, mate. Weston Mass runs this YouTube shit for all of us, okay? And I won't have it. I won't have any shit talk of Weston. So pull it in, mate. Couple arrested in Florida after losing their child at the beach and getting drunk. Fucking Florida. It never stops. <laughs> Florida is what you lot think Australia is. Anyone else accidentally swiping streams? <laughs> Uh, thoughts on Pat Barry grooming Rose from age 14. I think it's fucked up and I don't know how it's like, hasn't been called out. I really don't. Weston, stop deleting stuff, mate. It's okay. Weston, stop it. Stop it. How long until I time out cage? T minus zero. <laughs> Weston, I will pull your, I will pull your wrench from you, mate. Let him, let him troll. Let him troll. Think about this, right? How the fuck would you feel? Yeah. If you sent your daughter to cre to karate training, karate training, and the, I know it's all good, mate. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> um, if you sent your daughter to karate training, and then the second she turns eighteen, the coach just swoops down on it, and people are not like jumping up and down about this. Like, how is that allowed? It's fucking crazy to me, man. So my thoughts on it are: it's fucked. similarities between you two so i mean now you're on a pretty good path so what else do you think you need to do to get to that o'malley fight i just need to keep having performances like that and do my dirty work and just uh keep beating dogs like that i know i need to put my time in and um solidify myself against like game opponents so i'm more than willing to do that I do the dirty work against dogs it's very israel adesanya-esque language coming from this young man very Israel to Sunday as language. It's worrying to me, to be honest. There's there's a path here. There's a path here. And I'm not sure if he's on the right one. Cage, you're back. Just a ten up. But fucking watch it, Cage. Western Mass is watching you, mate. <laughs> Cage on it straight away. Doesn't miss a beat. And he's talking. He's already talking dogs. He's already talking doing dirty work against dogs. So you know what that means. God damn, what is going on? And Russia keeps scrolling quick, Doug. Oh, my God. 
a 360 degree view of Mars from the NASA robot being live streamed out of their fake studio in Las Vegas. We know that we know this, we know that this is the truth. Muhammad, don't look at anything. Trust me, this is the worst I've seen it in years. Fair, man. Fair. I know, I gotta keep this mouse flowing real quick. Practice. But it is getting on a four and a half hour stream, mate. I love the raid. Oh my god, did I just scroll on what I think I just scrolled on, mate? Yeah, they reckon this is Mars. Where is it? In between the beheadings. What do you think? I don't see any pyramids. I don't see any ancient technology. Do we believe what, what NASA shows us? Yes or no? Yeah, there's a video of one guy who was a suspect who got caught. I think I've seen the start of that video, mate. Because what I'm seeing with this dude, yeah. Okay. Well, at least he still has his head, you know? The Russians are pissed. Look, I, I am I am a Serb. We're Slavic. And you don't fuck around. You, you do not fuck around. Cage. That's not Mars. That's a close-up of my arsehole. <clears throat> Cage, if this is your arsehole, you need to shower, bro. Okay? Where is it? Cage, if this is your arsehole, it's red, it's crusty, it's full of cracks, you need to go to shower straight away. Wash it. Because how can you be rimmed? I haven't washed in weeks. How can you be rimmed if this is what they have to deal with? Okay? So fucking tighten it up, Cage. <laughs> tighten it up, mate. Or it will be tightened up for you. Oh, my God. Twitter is unhinged today. Roadhouse. I might watch that this afternoon. Hmm. <clears throat> There's multiple videos of the people who got caught. They caught up to 11 people. Those 11 people are not going to see the morning. They are not going to be seeing the morning. He's ready for Meniz next. Absolutely he is. Hell yeah, that's a perfect progression. <laughs> Meniz, when Talbot doesn't bite on his face, and it's fucking Lucas Tracy losing his shit. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's funny. <laughs> it's officially announced and we still do not care. This is the thing, right? Just because Conor McGregor says a fight is happening does not mean that a fucking fight is happening. Lucas Tracy's cool, man. I like Lucas. I like Lucas. You sometimes, it's like that with Lucas, isn't it? You're either like 100% in or 100% out. There's no halfway. And other times you think he's an idiot. I think Lucas knows what he's doing on YouTube, obviously. And he's just like, Benil Dariush will fucking end Dustin Poirier. Drive his head into the canvas. And it's like, maybe, you know, he's not very middle of the road, but he's cool. I like Lucas. But this one here, right? Does anyone actually believe? I don't hate him, but meh. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I to be honest, I don't really watch Lucas Tracy barely ever, you know? If, if I'm in the mood for some MMA content and Guru's not on or Guru hasn't done something, then I will default to Lucas. Luke, Lucas is playing the YouTube game, not the MMA game. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it's it's awesome that like there's more people like Ronan MMA is like being fucking awesome and killing it. So it's good that so many people are trying to do this and it gives us somewhere to go as fans. Like you watch these videos of his tier list and stuff. Yeah, easy content, easy content to get down. Guys, Toast has come back. Permission to link channel. Yeah, go nuts. Go absolutely nuts. In fact, if you guys have got another streamer that you want to go and watch, go crazy. Go watch Toast. Go have a good time because it's getting on 5 p.m. and I've been doing a four and a half hour stream. Plus, I drove back from a fucking campsite this morning after sitting all around a waterfall and drinking all night. So I am 
actually exhausted. But I'm happy to just hang out, talk shit. So if you want to link Toast and go watch Toast Western Mass, go nuts, man. Go nuts. <laughs> oh no, dude, before you bail, this cannot be true from Ben Davis. Ben Davis is a notorious troll on Twitter. Is your government still live in soy? Heard a lot during the lockdowns. Oh my God, mate, you have no idea. Honest to God, you have no idea how bad it is. One of the worst. One of the worst. Look at this. Look at this. Sin. Sin, if this is true, someone needs to fact check this because Ben Davis is a fucking notorious troll. But if this is true, 20 year old Igor De Silva after Dana White Contender Series 63 win, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. <laughs> we should have listened. <laughs> Bro, saw the future. <laughs> oh my lord. MMA is so fucking unhinged at times. Hold on, I'll fact check. Back in five. Sin's on it, boys. This is why when we come together, we... Pause. <laughs> Dude, this poor kid. This poor kid. Jesus. Jesus, unhinged. A security guard was not in the fucking mood for this kid's shenanigans. Western Mass. He ain't live right now. But he's back after four or five months of not... After seven or eight months of not streaming. Nice, man. He did actually say it. You looked it up. Jesus Christ. Mate. If he ever works his way back to the UFC, or if he goes over to one championship or bare knuckle... We need to get around him. That is kind of based, is it not? To be like, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. And then to come back and literally fucking bite someone. <laughs> kind of based. <laughs> toast, right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never watched a Toast stream. I don't know. But I know, I know of Toast from Guru's chat. And I know that Toast might be one of the most unhinged of the unhinged bunch. And good on him, because let's be honest, it makes it fucking fun. Toast is the man. Toast is the dude. Good on him, man. Good on him. Otherwise, we'd just be stuck in, you know, what is this? Here we go. I'm in a fucking street fight, and I'm fighting for my life. And mm. There's one person I have my back. Mm. It's it's Jesus. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can you say the alphabet backwards? No. Can you fuck people up though? Yes. <laughs> fucking Dustin Boyer. Yes, man. Dude, the fucking uh, Venom shorts in Hawaiian print looks sick. I would definitely be down for that. Have you ever trained a combat sport? No, mate. I'm a tradie. Like, we just swing. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. I've just done laboring work, laboring work. And to be honest, right, I've gotten into plenty of scraps as a young, dumb kid getting up, growing up, but never trained in combat sports. Go to the gym regularly. But I'm because I earn all my money with my hands and my feet, I hang drywall sheets for a living. I do drywalling, plastering, painting. It's a massive injury scares the shit out of me because I, like, I just lose everything that I have. I need to pay all my bills. There's no one else paying my fucking bills. So, no. Just dumb street fights as a kid. Oh, my God. These dudes on their knees. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good for that tomorrow. It's not going to be good. Whoever the Russians caught tonight, today, they're in some fucking... The difference between these two posters sort of shows you 
what has become of the UFC since UFC 200, right? Just the lack of effort. That's UFC 200, right? That's the UFC 200 poster. All the fighters, everyone looking sick as fuck. Bit of CGI-ness to it all. This is the UFC 300 poster. Big fucking difference, isn't it? Big fucking difference. And then look at the cards that we're getting these days. You know, look at the cards that we're getting. And while people are here, because this wasn't long enough for me to make a video on, but it is something that I've wanted to say for a minute, okay? Blame modern marketing. Mate, blame the UFC losing, like, just getting watered down, okay? They think less is more. Maybe. This hasn't been long enough for me to make a video on, but it is something that I wanted to say. When people say, I don't mind the Apex events because we get, more fights every single year that is fucking bullshit that is not true at all we get the exact same amount of fights that we did without the apex there i because i researched this to make a video and all it takes is pretty much that sentence plus a screenshot of each of them if you go to wikipedia and you search how many Uf ufc events was there in 2016 right when the ufc was pretty much peaking and connor was on his run there was something like 48 47 43 events something like that Last year, the UFC did like 48, 47, 43 events, something like that. It was pretty much the exact same amount of fights with or without the Apex. Saint Sin just looked into it. And what's the word saying? He didn't really say it, but the article is real. Huh? So they just made up an article about him saying some shit? Like, it wasn't the dude was trying to troll. He just found an article and fell fell in, like, believed it. But he didn't actually say that. It's just some internet meme -ish. Damn, man. It was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. Damn. But thanks for doing the work, Saint. Appreciate it, man. Good on you. It's insane. Saint Sin. It's insane. Anyway, yeah. Next time you hear someone say, He's Brazilian. It was in a translation. I doubt the idiom is the same. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Well, I mean, it's not a meme. Okay. Well, I mean, let's go, let's just go with it. It's sort of a quote. It's like a misinterpreted quote. Western Mass, everyone sub and like or I'll smite you. Thanks, Western. I appreciate it, man. But anyway, uh, it's insane. Thank you for doing the work, man, and checking it. And yeah, it is probably a lost in translation sort of thing. And next time you hear someone say, I don't mind the Apex because we get more fights there, they, maybe they don't realize, but it's one of those mass lies that's told. We do not get more fights at the Apex. We get the same amount of fights as usual, with or without the Apex. The UFC is just saving money. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. <sighs> you know what? With that last little tidbit that I finally wanted to get out, I'm done. I'm out of here. People are leaving. I'm done. You're leaving. We're leaving. We're all leaving. It's been a good day. It's been a long night. Cage, Western Mass, you're a good dude. Guys, thank you for joining me on my stream tonight. I really appreciate it today, wherever you are. Sorry, tagged the wrong person. <laughs> Cage, you fucking dog. <laughs> if you enjoyed this stream, my brain is fried. Yeah, it is, mate. Night, everyone. If you enjoyed this stream, there is a Discord link down in the comments. I made it today. I will post on Discord when I go live. It is kind of sporadic. I know you're all leaving. It's kind of sporadic because I have a regular job and I run my own business. So when I find an hour, I will put it in the Discord and be like, gonna find an hour this afternoon, gonna go live and let you all know. Until then, have a good weekend. Have a good Saturday night. Thanks for the raid. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. That means no needles. See you lads.